out in bars without any women who tell them they have to go home early. I've a dream that black men and white men and yellow men and red men will just be able to play darts in the basement and their women won't be telling them nothing like you've got to go to bed today I have a dream I have a dream that women won't say it's kind of weird that you kind of do need beer can you not just not have a beer I have a dream that women will understand when you do yard work for seven straight hours. In the blazing sun, there is nothing better than a beer. I have a dream today. All right. Hi, everybody. Let's see if we are rocking and rolling. Sorry I'm late. I, uh, I have... Let's see here. Oh, I am live. Awesome. I just sent myself a bunch of stuff I wanted to put up and it won't and it hasn't went to my email yet. It's like this dead zone. I just figured I'd pop on and just wait for it to go. Let me try another one. Maybe if I email another one of my emails. Because there's some really interesting really interesting stuff going down. And I just took a really, really, really long nap. I was just uh because I didn't have Crowder writing session today. And uh, so I lied down on the, on the couch thinking, I'm just going to close my eyes for just a second. I'm going to close my eyes for a second, and then I'm going to get up and I'm going to get more stuff done. And then I was woken up by my giant dog, George. My giant, my giant dog, George, putting his nose in my face, which means... Which meant my, my wife and kid were home from, um, from music class. And I was like, wait a minute, but music class ends at 10.50. That's when I realized that I had slept a while. I have a dream. I just do not get why these images don't... I'll just, I'll just copy and paste them. I don't care. I'll just copy and paste them. Give me one second. Oh, and Ben Hamin, Instagram. Oh, I have to get a G. For those of you that do not know, let me fill you in on a little behind the scenes stuff. I don't have a G. The G doesn't work on my computer. Literally, the G doesn't work. Okay? And I was wondering why, and I think it might be because God wanted me to stop typing nigger. Because it makes it a lot harder. I now have to copy and paste it. Okay. Owen Benjamin Instagram. I have a dream. And then I'll just copy and paste my own ones. Although, I, there's one that I really wanted to show you guys. Okay. I can't download any videos or nothing. <sighs> stupid, stupid. I was going to get, I was listening to this radio lab about bots. Bots are insane. Like the fact that bots can now mimic human nature better than human beings can mimic, mimic human nature is really, really weird. And I, I want to talk about that. Just let me get my thoughts together. Let me show you this first. All right. Do you guys remember when Michelle Wolf did that, did that, um, Roasting, when she did the, what's that thing called? The press, the press dinner or whatever. And, and, and you roast the press and the, and the president. And all she did was just say absolute nonsense. And she bombed. And everyone was like, why? Why would she do that? It must be so embarrassing for her. This is why. Okay. The, she, uh... She Instagrammed this picture. It said, get those billboards up. It's uh, The Break with Michelle Wolf. You deserve a break. Every Sunday, May, starting May 27th on Netflix. A Netflix original series. You know Netflix. The company that now has 
Susan Rice. Oh, yeah. The same Susan Rice as the Obama administration is one of the heads of it. And uh, another thing that's coming out on Netflix. Oh, I got to get this. I got to get Got to get this image. The, the wheelie, wheelie, crazy guy talking shit. I think I might have helped his career, though. Hmm. I have a dream. I'll, I'll snag that. What the fuck was I talking about? Netflix? Oh, yeah, Obama has his own TV show coming out on Netflix. It's all about the Obamas. It's just straight-up political propaganda at this point. So, so enjoy, everybody. <laughs> Obama's such a fuckhead. Like, he's just such a fucking douche. Just such a fucking douche. Oh, I already got a super chat. Been traveling. Uh, so sorry if you covered this. Is this spying coup by the uh, DOJ, FBI, CIA, MI6, Obama White House, and compliant media the greatest political scandal of our time? Authoritarianism is live and well. Oh, thanks, Crossed Up. Thanks, James. I mean, I need to see more information to even comment on it, to be honest with you. I think that the scandal is, is hiding in plain sight. It's just right here. It's, it's this. It's this, look, this. Like that's that's insane. That that Netflix is the biggest. So you have Google, Netflix, Facebook, Twitter, all left wing socialist shills. Like prove provable. Uh whoa. <laughs> you don't need to look any farther. That's it. We're, it's toast. That's why you gotta make your own. It's all about making your own. I just read this because I have Google words when, when people write articles with, with my name in it. And it says, Twitter unleashes fury on Food Network host Josh Denny over N-word comments. I'll just uh, skip to the end, which is what I felt very interesting. For those of you that don't know, Denny, let's see. I'll, I'll, hopefully I still have images from yesterday. Even Dictionary.com started digging in on Josh Denny. Josh Denny says, Straight white male has become this century's N-word. It's used to offend and diminish the recipients based on assumption and bias, no difference in the usage. And then Dictionary.com got 115,000 retweets when they said, The N-word is considered the most offensive word in the English language. Straight white male is not. Now, the N-word is not the most offensive word in the English language. It's not even the most offensive N-word. Necrophilia is. It means uh, uh, someone fucks a dead body with their penis. Uh, way more offensive, unless you're insane or you have an agenda of uh, the welfare state. Anyway, like this guy seemed pretty happy about stealing someone's bike. You don't think it's more offensive that this guy stole a bike than the guy who got his bike stolen could call him a uh, racial pejorative? They do, though. They would, they would say that saying the N-word at this guy as he rode off with your bike is more offensive than the theft itself. Because it said, ask God for a bike, but I, for those of you that are just listening. Oh, thank you, my, my boy. Aim, hey, say hi. This is... <laughs> you guys are all redded out today. A red and orange colorblind guy. <laughs> do you, uh, do you uh, have any new words today, Walter? Give me words. Say coconut. Coconut. <laughs> <laughs> coconut. Coconut. That's so good, buddy. What's your favorite color shark? You want shark shoes? Shark. Shark, do you like the shark? Shark. Shark. All right. Okay, bye. <laughs> you say bye? Bye. Bye. <laughs> people. Oh, say it again. Oh, yeah, but don't associate them with the people, though. I, I started thinking that might be bad for his mind. Yeah, but we're the people, though. I'm, I'm a person. Mom was a person. People, people. I don't think you've told me that one yet. I just, I just, uh, so, someone wrote, wrote an email, and I thought that that made a good sense. Oh, okay. Give me a kiss. Should we say bye, everyone? Mm, well, bye. Well, say, uh, <laughs> bye, dad, dad's, uh, I don't know what to do in that point. You know what I'm saying? It made sense, though. Someone wrote an email that made sense, where they're like, 
I don't know if it matters. Do you think it matters? Uh, we can talk about it later. We don't have to dive into that. He thinks that the TV has a bear on it. It's like, that's just what kids think. Yeah, we can get into it later. Alright, well. <laughs> yeah, someone wrote me an email that's saying, um, might not be the best to have your kid associate a screen with people. Because I go, say hi to the people. And he goes, hi, people. I don't think it matters. He thinks that Little Bear is really on TV. And I think, like, I don't know. I mean, but I definitely don't want to do anything weird to his brain. So I'm trying just to avoid everything like that. But I, I, I don't fucking know. All right. So Dictionary.com is obviously not in the word business these days. I just woke up and Big Bear gets uh, grumpy when he wakes up. Just to let you guys know that. So I'm going to be a little fucking ornery. Denny's remarks prompted some Twitter users to dig through the comedian's backlog of tweets, which contained several truly ugly messages from years ago. Hey, Chinese girl at the pool, please close your legs. No one wants to see your slanty pussy. That's hilarious, Josh. Why are people... (sighs) Oh, one of them's a little weird. That's all right. After public outcry, Dan Snyder has has said he's changed the offensive team's name from Redskins to the Prairie Niggers. That's that's hilarious. How is that not, how is that offensive? That's not offensive at all. Do they not get the joke that it's more offensive than Redskins? <sighs> the original name of Instagram was the line of thirsty ass niggas starts below the, these pictures of girls, but they had to shorten it. How is that offensive? It's not. We all know it's not. We all know that none of that's offensive. That that's funny. Those are funny jokes. All right. So then this Nicole human says, not surprising that Josh Denny, the comedian. Yeah, he is a comedian. I don't even know the guy, by the way. I just feel I should defend him. Who said straight white male is the century's N word as a whole lot of other awful op- uh, opinions. Those aren't real opinions. Those are jokes. After public outcry, Dan Sh- that, that's not an opinion. That's, that's a fake news headline. Hey, and so then Samoa Ho, I'm not, I can't make this up. This is why I started looking into bots because these people can't be this stupid. I don't think that these, no, I know that they can. And I know that they pretend, they, they feign outrage when they're not really outraged. They're like soccer players, um, Pretending that they got tackled to get a yellow card on the field. Just like, but uh, are you aware that Josh Denny, the host of your show, ginormous food has a ginormous history of using racial slurs and misogynistic racial language that nigger. No, I'm just kidding. I'd like to know exactly where you stand on Josh Denny's constant use of racial slurs and misogyny. By the way, any business that just stands up against any of this stuff just will thrive. Just FYI, I'm not a businessman, I'm a comedian. But I have learned a thing or two in the last uh, year or so. Anybody that just doesn't take these people seriously will start crushing at whatever business they're at because there's a giant market. Like I've stumbled into a pretty lucrative field here just by not being a bitch. Unintentionally. Imagine if, if I intentionally, if my design... If my goal in life is to make money, all I would do is start a business like any business and just not listen to these people because there is like the majority of the world hates these people. And all right. So anyway, as the backlash raged, Denny stuck to his guns. I I told him to do that. I think he was going to do that anyway. But I told him if he apologized, I'd, I'd start sending death threats to his family like the, like the socialists. <clears throat> then he stuck to his guns in his initial statements and even rem- remarked that he liked the quote-unquote healthy debate unfolding on Twitter. This has been fun. I deeply appreciate those that engaged in healthy debate and dialogue and could decipher jokes from points I was trying to make. It all comes from a place of wanting us to be better to each other. Everyone deserves love. Well, I disagree with that. Everyone does not deserve love. Like that stupid bitch that tried to ruin your life, Denny, does not deserve love. And I uh, don't think that they do. Anyway, so this is the part that I want to get to. 
The owners of Santa Monica's Westside Comedy Theater, a place, by the way, that I've performed at hundreds of times. I know the owners well. They're comedians in an improv group, and they all pitched in together to, to start a theater, which I thought was really cool. And uh, I brought celebrities there to watch shows. They have celebrities there all the time. Uh, it's, it's a cool little hole in the wall. Artists kind of ran, uh, ja uh, jaunt. For those of you that have seen 60 Minutes, 7 Days, my documentary about writing an, uh, an hour of material in a week, the, the part about cultural appropriation, and no, the foodie part and cultural appropriation, the part where you see me and Amy when she's pregnant with Walter walking into that theater, that's that theater, okay? Uh, did not appreciate this healthy debate. As Denny explained on Facebook posts published on Saturday, they actually canceled his show following his the Twitter rant. It's not a Twitter rant. It's only a Twitter rant if you're not left wing. Quote unquote, not surprisingly today, the venue owners called me to say that the show is done and I'm not welcome at the club based on their desire to be inclusive, Danny writes. But as the internet is teaching us with people like Owen Benjamin, Stephen Crowder, Ben Shapiro, and Jordan Peterson, that doesn't include diversity in ideas or thought. Good for you, Danny. Good for you, Josh. So support Josh Danny is what I'm trying to say. He's a soldier. If he apologizes, though, fuck him. But I don't think he will. Because the people that apologize when they know they're right are almost worse than the idiots. Because they should know better. So, uh, carry on, soldier. I even, uh, I, was, I was texting with him and I was like... Because he wrote to me, do you have any advice for, for this? I'm being Owen Benjamin. And I was like, oh yeah, I do, buddy. Never apologize. Don't apologize to a, to a mob. And uh, like really, really think about what you did right or wrong. And what you did isn't wrong. And we all know that. So just stay with it. And I even told him, I'm like, dude, on the other side, you can make a better living. And he's like, well, right now it's at zero. So, haha. -ha. And I'm like, dude, I thought I was done, done. You know, I'll get to the cripple in a second. Because they still are acting like I'm done. They're acting like I was thrown out of comedy. And I'm not. Like, look at, like, for those of you that come to these live streams, like, just the, the super chats and stuff, and then add in the fact I sell my own hour special for my website between Patreon and my, um, and subscribers on my, on my website, uh, between touring, selling, selling shit online, like, I'm fine. And I want people to know I'm fine because it's, it's a big trick. I'm starting to realize that people try to do, they try to make it look like they broke you when they don't, when they realize they don't break you, they try to make it look like that. Like that one uh, meme that went so viral about me when I was like, fuck you, David Hogg. I don't have any, uh, cause I was standing up for that, that chick from Fox where Media Matters went after her sponsors. And I was like, fuck you, David Hogg. I don't have any sponsors, bitch. Come at me. And then I was like, uh, YouTube is, has suspended me, Patreon or whatever. I'm like, they're coming after my, the food in my family's mouth or something. And, and, and there's this big meme like, life comes at you fast. And I'd recovered within three days. But they don't post that. And so I started thinking about it. I'm like, why did they do that? They want to show they have power over People, I might do a whole episode where I just break down my forms of income just to show other comedians how not scary it is to make it through the uh, looking glass. At the time, you have to be willing to lose everything. I thought I'd lost everything. I still sometimes think I'm about to lose everything again. Like when I just had to give $20,000 back to the publisher when they canceled my, my book. And I'm going to read a section of it today. Uh, I believe to show you guys how dark it, it gets. Not not dark in a bad way. It's still, you know, still solid. But um, like the type of thing that that one of the the most prestigious publishers in the world is not going to publish. It's just a fact. All right, I'm gonna try to find it now. So Godspeed, young Josh Denny. We got your back, buddy. Because we have to support each other going through the looking glass. Or else we're full of shit. You know what I'm saying? 
All right. I can't find the book right now. I'm going to check in on the Super Chats and, re and read the ones from the PayPal. I'm so mad I'm going to quit using my sister's in-law's Netflix account. LOL. Manster Bear. Yeah, well, I... I had a real talk. I, I, I'm not going to say who, but one of the biggest co comedians on Netflix, by far. I had a real, I had a big talk with him a few years ago about that I thought it was a Ponzi scheme, and he got kind of concerned about it. I haven't heard from him in a while, but I was like, dude, they don't make money. Like it's ten bucks a month, and you get it through your like everyone shares an account, and their budgets for shit are fucking insane. It is absolutely government funded. There's no question in my mind. Talk about conspiracies that are obvious. Okay, cable was like 100 bucks a month and they also had commercials and they were still barely making money. And now Netflix is 10 bucks for like these massive budgets, like original movies, original TV. They gave Monique a half a million dollars. Monique. No, dude, it's it's absolute horseshit. It's absolute horseshit. It's never made a dime. It's it's been in debt since it started. And some people are like, "Well, you don't understand the model." But yes, I do. Same people tell me that about the national debt. They go, "Well, we're really in debt to ourselves," and you don't understand. No, I do understand. I understand so well that I know you're full of shit. A business has to make money. It's one thing if you're slowly closing the gap on your debt, but that's not what they're doing. They're 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 so far in debt every year and the debt is only increasing that it's blatantly not a business it's uh it's propaganda and as someone deep in the comedy world i've i've seen just horrible comedians get netflix special after netflix special that won't be on the same show as me back in the day not because i was toxic or uh a bigot racist homophobe they because they couldn't follow me that that's a fact and they also couldn't sell tickets. And so, like, they'd have to go before me. They'd, they'd get their manager to cry and say, oh, I, 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 why is Owen on the show? I, you know I can't follow the fucking piano. <sighs> it's like that, that, that cripple. I'll get to him in a second. How long before the, looms, the loons claim and demand Netflix as a universal right so they can watch Obozo Ob special? Uh, I mean... Hopefully they all just die off. Community Bear, you are almost 81 in bunny years. That's hilarious. Well, exactly 80.85, but I rounded up. P.S. Wally is awesome. Love hearing his sweet voice. Me too. You're a good dude. I very much appreciate what you do. Thank you. Any thoughts on circumcision? I am, and with a little fellow on the way, I think his pecker should look like mine. Haven't went any deeper than that. Uh, well, I don't think it's, it's, a, it's not like female circumcision. It's not like, uh, you know, I, I, I'm against it personally, but it's not like uh, that big of a deal. I don't think they remember. I wasn't circumcised, but for some reason, my dick doesn't really look like it. Like, I bet, like, there's a good amount of people that have seen my dick that probably wouldn't even know that. Because, it like, I, I think I was kind of born without a lot of foreskin. It's like two skin. Like, I don't have an anteater dick. It's weird. Like, some of those dudes that uh, aren't circumcised, they have, like, a wicked anteater dick, and I never had that. I think my wiener just kind of, like, outgrew his clothes. But um, I think it's uh, unnecessary. And just the horror stories of when they botch a circumcision and then they, like, have to cut the dude's dick off and stuff. Or, like, when one of those weirdo Jew guys, when they do uh, a bris... And uh, one of those old disgusting men like literally bite the, the kid's dick and then gives him fucking herpes. I think you should just avoid all that. Ed O'Bear. I haven't watched lately because finals, but I'm glad to be back. and glad to see you and your beautiful family are doing well. Coffee and bear streams. Cheers. Oh, we're doing great. Thanks, buddy. Crossed up. Forgot to type the first time I live right near Utica. I'm a huge fan. Just started my own channel and was wondering if you would subscribe to me on YouTube. Sure. You got to tell me the channel name. You keep forgetting all your stuff. Tell me your channel name and I'll subscribe to it. Uh, is that like a Muslim bomb a la walk bar? <laughs> Michael, I bear here. I've been calling myself I bear for a while now, but I've never been verified. May I be? I saw you a couple years ago at the Wild Wild West 
Comedy Festival. Got to meet you, Burn, and Gary Cannon while I was there. Been a fan forever since. Of course. Welcome, I Bear. I love it, buddy. Yeah, that was a fun time. See, that's the difference between libertarians and socialists. I was hard to follow on that tour. Straight up, the first two shows, I was second. And I would kill so hard that Vince Vaughn made me his closer. And there was no ego in it. It was all business. That's how, And it's not because I'm funnier than Vince Vaughn. It's just I'm really, really good at stand-up and with piano. And so Vince is like, baby, I'm telling you, the Big Bear's got to fucking close this baby out. And then we can do a whole thing. And then the whole thing was we, I would do uh, Don't Stop Believing where I'd be like. And the crowd would be like. Ah. And I'd get them all to, uh, to freak out when I started singing. I was like, just a small town girl. And there would be like 5,000 people like. Ah. And then Vince Vaughn would come out and sing. Uh just a city boy and they'd freak out and then Kevin James would sing a singer in a smoky room and then phase on love would come out and then burn had come out shirtless with Pete Billingsley from uh, uh, the Christmas story and then we'd all be like shirtless hitting around a volleyball from a top gun sketch from sketch sketch from earlier in the show and the real song had come on and be like don't stop believe in and the and the lights had come up and everyone would be screaming that that is only that only happens when you're not um insecure and you're in into like merit like vince vaughn literally was like owen's got to be the closer he kills that hard like so it's like okay it's not about owen's better than people it's not like i'm a better person or overall more skilled or more deserving it's just a fucking fact and so a lot of lefty comedians would never want me to open for them. I've even offered with some of them back in the day when I was on their level even because I just wanted to tour more. And uh, like the Impractical Jokers have had me open for them. And it's, it's, out of, it's out of respect for the audience where you don't connect your ego with the show. It's all just about the audience. Like you want to give them the best show you can give them. And if I was one of the best shows, that's what they give them. And that's very libertarian. That's very business. That's very um, uh, free market. You know? Now, if someone's doing a spelling bee or needing to be organized, I'm the last person you can possibly hire. Because I'm fucking terrible. I'm good at a few things. And one of them is just crushing on stage. Who's my favorite comedian today? Norm McDonald. Uh, and the guys from South Park. No question. Trey, Trey Parker and Norm MacDonald. Uh, they're on a different level. They're like retarded. The Obamas just signed to work with Netflix. Yes, government money is involved. Oh, of course it is. Oh, it's crossed up. Crossed up on YouTube. Looks like it's a Christian station. I will. Oh, absolutely. I'll check you out, buddy. I'll get it going. Interesting thing about fiat currency. During the financial crisis, Japan briefly talked about dissolving their currency as a means of dissolving their debt. There's a thing you can do when your currency has no real world value, which is fully insane. Whoa. I gotta, man, I gotta get into fucking crypto. I was watching the show Billions last night and they referenced crypto and you know that it's, a, it's almost like something the government's pushing at this point. If Billions is referencing it, because Billions, it's a good show, but it's also um, lefty. I mean, one of the main characters, like one of the most powerful figures in the show is trans, which isn't accidental. <clears throat> you know, when you're trying to develop a, a child's brain, I've been researching a ton on child development and uh, education lately because I have a boy that's now starting to learn things and I want him to be a fucking legend. And one thing is they look up to who has power. So, you know, firefighters, garbage men, police, you know, when you're a kid, you look at basic power, like who drives the big truck, big boom, you know, like, like, uh, when I was a kid, there was a time when I wanted to be a garbage man because we didn't understand, um, um, uh, you know, like prestige. It was who had the big truck, big boom, who, uh, came in their big truck and picked up the big things and put them in. And said hi, and everyone said hi, and they jumped on their truck and went away. Like, to me, a garbage man was the king of the neighborhood. 
and a firefighter, and I wanted to research sharks. I wanted to be a um, marine biologist, a paleontologist, dinosaurs, because what has more power than dinosaurs and sharks? So I wanted to be close to power, dinosaurs and sharks. This is how kids think. And so when you're watching TV, when you're like a, um, an adolescent and you see the, 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 the powerful character is trans, it opens that up more to you. And it's on purpose. And that's why there's something going on with that show with that. Because it's still a good show. Paul Giamatti is a really good actor. And there's some good plot points. But there's too much, there's also too much cheating. I, uh, I was talking to Amy about that last night. Like, uh, it's so weird. Like, now that we're like, and when we both met, we we're both a little wild. We we're wild, wild LA children. She was getting her master's and going to raves and shit. I was uh, on a popular sitcom and we met and we, we loved each other so quickly. It was, it was almost destructive. It's all in the book. But now the thought of us being with other people is so out there that you're watching this and you're having, and you see these like marriages where they're always on the verge of having an affair or something. And I just, I feel like that's written by young dudes or like gay guys. It's like sex in the city. You can tell when something's written by like gays or like pervy, just weirdo guys, is they're always on the verge of cheating or they're always about to have like some group sex thing. And especially once you have kids, but even after marriage, it's like, that isn't even close. Like if, like it isn't even a threat. Like to us, cheating is if if we start a show together, like Billions or something, and she falls asleep, and I like creepily watch the whole series, like she literally reacts like I I cheated on her. <laughs> I mean, she still like laughs about it and stuff, but to us, that's like that's what we face in our marriage. Is uh, like, did you finish that after I fell asleep? It also has to do with ice cream. And I just find that, yeah, like when that, when that cripple said that about, you know, you cheat on your wife and your kid was in an accident or something like that. I didn't even address that in it because I thought it was so stupid. I was insulted that he said I didn't sell out a show that I sold out because I always assume that the internet kind of knows me. It's one of my strengths and my weaknesses. It's a strength because I can get a sense of intimacy and closeness with really cool people that I, I don't know and that... We all just have a great time together. But at the same time, I assume things. Like, I assume that, like, that's so preposterous that... Because, like, yesterday on Instagram, people were DMing me, like, Hey, man, do you cheat on your wife? I'm like, no. Why would you think that? They're like, because of that thing you posted that the, kid, the guy in the wheelchair said about you. I'm like, I thought that was so obvious and dumb that I didn't even address it. Like, I didn't even, like, it didn't even register in my mind. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when someone's called a racist, a bigot, and a homophobe, and uh, a Nazi, a Ku Klux Klan member, alt-right, um, like all these things all the time, I just, I, I don't even think about it. I'm like, oh, oh, they're liars. Like, do you not know that they're all liars? <laughs> all right. I'll get to the, the, I'll get to the cripple in a second. Big Bear, have you seen the latest Kendrick Lamar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to talk. That was one of the things that I emailed myself, and I can't, I can't uh, seem to get it in my email. I also want to email. Man, I'll try another email. How's that sound? I'll have to sign into it though. Yeah, that was. Uh, it's called entrapment. What Ken Kendrick Lamar did. You got, let me, all right, I'll just read a couple of these. Girthy Bear, you're officially verified. He sent me, uh, he's a tree guy. And he said, Breakfast in Hell, it's his pump up song for tree work. That's awesome. I love that guy. He sent me a great thing. Things get awkward when Kendrick Lamar recently invited a fan on stage to help rap Mad City. So one of the lines in, in the song is the, the word niggers in it. So he, he invites a white girl on stage and of course she sings the song accurately and then he gets mad at her and, and shames her for saying nigger when it's in his song. 
Yeah, that's insane. I, I mean, that's just so beyond crazy. Uh, oh, someone commented something interesting on my mom gets mad watching the debate with Stephen Fry, Jordan Peterson. Around 4829, quote unquote, I don't think people on welfare should be able to vote, quote unquote. Do you think people who claim tax deduction should be able to vote? Yes, tax deduction. It means you're deducting what you pay in taxes. If people don't pay taxes and they get free money, they should not be able to vote or uh, be able to vote. Like that is that shouldn't even be a debate. If you don't p- chip in for the pizza, you don't get to pick the topics. That doesn't mean you won't get benefits or whatever. It just means you can't decide to keep increasing your benefits constantly. Like this cripple. Uh Oh, this is hilarious. Like the, the cripple from yesterday wrote, Mr. Awesome needs to copy and paste comebacks from his live stream. And people just had my back. Like this dude, Maxwell. Much love, Maxwell. Salway. What's your beef with Owen Benjamin? His podcast is awesome. Joe writes, Dude's a faux leather edge sword with his why can't white conservatives say the N-word crap. I made a joke two days ago and he sends his fans after me. I wrote... I didn't send anyone after you. Stop with the victim complex. It's wheelie, wheelie gay. All right, I'll, I'll get into that right now. And then I'll read the uh, paypal.me slash feed the bear if you want to feed that bear. You know you know all about feeding that bear. Add account. Why well, did, oh, why am I cap, cap boxed? There's such a beautiful rain today. Why didn't they laugh? Do I have a saved password? Yes, I do. And it didn't go through. Oh, and sorry about yesterday. It's not Unbearable App. It's Unbearables App. Like Unbearable Sap. Unbearables, Unbearables App, app.com is the, uh, is the new uh, app. Yeah, so my, my phone isn't sending anything. It just isn't sending a thing. It's it's infuriating. I've been doing this since 10.30. Or 10.50, whenever I fucking woke up. I really want to send this to you guys. It's wicked funny. I'm going to try it without Wi-Fi. Alright, so uh, the cripple. Let's take a look at this guy. And one guy said some of his stuff's funny. God bless if he's funny. Listen, here's the thing. If he's funny, this only helps him. You know what I'm saying? I got a bunch of eyeballs on him. I'm sure a couple people like his stuff. And that doesn't matter to me. Nimmer even texted me that yesterday. He's like, stop blowing up these fucking losers that are attacking you. I'm like, I don't care. I, it's, it's not like his success bothers me because he has none. And if he had any, then that it's deserved. I just want to be funny. And I want to show people that it doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair. If you attack me, I will, I will fuck you up. Like I don't pity you when you wheel around town. All right. This, this guy is cripple. This is how the whole thing started. Just he, he, out of nowhere, I've never heard of this guy. He writes, didn't your second show at the Bray improv get canceled due to low ticket sales? Second show. By the way, I had four fucking shows, asshole. And no, it didn't. Of course it didn't. Anyway, he said, I'm only five years in and I was able to get the room to capacity when I filmed my half hour in Orange County last month. I wrote, no, I sold out all the shows. The second show was canceled months earlier due to a fundraiser. I should have thrown in something like, probably for cripples. I filmed my first half hour with Comedy Central, by the way. Where will yours be shown? Uh, I should have sent Pornhub. And I said, the wheelchair is a sweet prop. Instead of get her done, you should say, wheels go round. I'm dead serious. It would kill. I'm, I, to this day, I am dead serious about that. If he said wheels go round is his catchphrase, hilarious. Imagine seeing a comedian in a wheelchair on stage going, he tells a joke. And then the audience laughs and he's like, wheels go round. That would be like legendarily funny. Anyway, but don't listen to me, wheelchair guy. I'm only, you know, 16 years in and I, I'm, you know, painted on the wall of the improv, but they'll probably paint over me as soon as, you know, Obama owns it. So he wrote, calling my wheelchair a prop is an example of your career stagnation. 
No, it isn't. How is that an example of my career stagnation? Your wheelchair is a prop. Also, I'd rather be a comedian in a wheelchair than the third-rate piano comedian. Third-rate? Does this sound like third-rate? I'm the best piano player of all of comedy. Name one better. Except, there's this one either English or Australian guy. I can't remember his name, but he's fucking sick. Uh, Timothy. Tim. Chant. Tim Enchantment. Tim Minchant. All right. Aimlessly screaming racial swears makes you more of a prop comedian than me in the wheelchair I have to use. Uh, my racial swears have an aim, nigger. And then Joe says, maybe your bike wouldn't have been stolen if you hadn't cheated on your wife before her guilt trip pregnancy. That, I actually thought that was a good burn, even though there's no reality in it. I was like, I mean, that's, there's no reality in it. Me and Amy were trying really hard to have, to get her pregnant. <laughs> her guilt trip pregnancy? I, like for the six months before she got pregnant, our theme was, uh, uh, it's time to breed. That was our like constant theme. All right, anyway. So then we all got on board. This, this, this joke is brought to you by the Unbearables. My career is up and running. Your jokes have no legs. I'm taking a stand over this. Just be the bigger man and walk away. Slow your roll, bro. Pump the brakes. Your career is on the skids. I'm wheelie, wheelie serious. Stop trying to spin the story. I'm a stand-up comedian who gets standing ovations. You spoke enough already. The rubber has hit the road. Put your best foot forward and make your jokes accessible to everyone. I'm getting ramped up. Keep your joke book handy. And stop giving me your sitting bull. Wheelie nice talking to you, now roll away. And then tons of people proceeded to write hysterical ones on my Instagram. Um, what do we got here? And then he wrote, he wrote something to me and then blocked me. Uh, he wrote, I've never called myself a victim or asked for special treatment. Owen is just repeating jokes I've heard from people who also had to quit comedy. See, that's the thing. They're trying to make people think that I had to quit comedy. Does it, does it appear that way? Wheelie man. So I just wrote your wheelie wheelie mean. All right. Someone wrote, he brought your wife into this spineless coward. Hilarious. Um, the guy couldn't walk a mile in, in your footsteps, Owen. From Eric. Hilarious. He got really carried away. Um, oh, Talkback said, I performed with this guy. He's an OC comic. And I've heard from another OC comic who is also disabled that Joey is an asshole. The dude that told me this had some autism, but he really hated Ural. Yeah, the whole comic, the whole sit down comedy community really can't stand this, this, this cripple. Shines Fresh said, one of my best friends is a wheelchair. I called him once with crazy news and he said, this is huge. Are you sitting down? Ha ha, we died laughing. Well, that's, that's whatever. Any human being knows that if someone faces something that's really hard to get through, like, like being paralyzed, humor's your own, humor will save your life. You got to have humor and you can't be pitied. You can't be pitied. If you pity someone who's become like a, a quadriplegic or a paraplegic, uh, you're not helping them. Because if you bust balls with someone that isn't handicapped and then you no longer do when they're handicapped, they feel like they are not human anymore. Like they're babies, they're infants, they're less than human. They're, it's almost like when you don't hold a wolf accountable for killing a rabbit because it's a wolf, it's, not, it's an animal, not a human. And that's like what uh, the left does with blacks in inner cities. It's, it's disgusting, and it only makes things worse. Do you still tell him to break a leg when he goes on stage? It's from Ratchet. I'm wheelie, wheelie, serious, savage, LOL. Um, I mean, fuck, you basically just paralyzed the rest of his body after that slam. People just don't understand to not fuck with pro comics. Thank you for that one. He's not spineless. His spine just doesn't work. <laughs> I guess he won't be giving you a standing ovation. I would have shown him more respect 
if he could have stood up and taken it like a man. I bet he's really kicking himself right now. Uh, damn it, Owen Benjamin. Bears pick on fruits and fish, not vegetables. These I'm reading this like straight down. This is how funny my my followers are. Like I'm not even editing that. Like this is just every person I'm reading. From one Owen to another, keep running circles around jerk-offs trying to jump off you like a trampoline to their own success. Mighty Ducks fan. Was at the second show. Can confirm you killed. Yeah, he's a liar and a cripple. Shawnee Utah. You went all in. Ha ha. Very good point, though. Uh, Miss Puncher. He really walked into this. He ought to have known when to step off. Maybe next time he'll learn that it was important to walk the walk. That was savage, Owen. It's like you got a running start on him, and he was never able to get back on his feet. Damn it, now I'm doing it. You roasted that guy on a spit. On a spit. Round and round. This is gold. Why did he speak on your wife? He literally needs to slow his roll. Um, all this from the chairman of the board. I actually can't stop laughing. Not victim pass. No victim pass for him. Never heard of him, smiley face. Cried laughing so hard. He's actually a very funny non-stand-up comic. Sit-down comedian? Either way, only one way to settle this. When uh, when the wife gets drug into it, fight his ass in the front of a Ford Ranger with seatbelts on. <laughs> he attacks you because he knows... All right, you get the idea. So it's funny because the, the thing I wrote under it, I wrote a random stranger started talking shit, found out he was in a wheelchair, so I did wheelchair puns. Why? Because I don't think being a cripple gives you a free pass to being an asshole. By the way, Stephen Hawking was a cripple. Because I don't think... Um, all right, so because people who treat cripples like infants damn them to a crippled mind, not just crippled legs. I don't want anyone to treat me differently because of my huge penis. Sure, I've been made fun of. But if you don't think I can take a joke just because of my massive cock, it will make me feel like an other. Big cocks matter. Yeah, good times. Yeah, that guy's a fucking loser. And that's the thing, is when they start coming at you like that, it's because they start getting these balls that comes from the comedy community. Because I live way out in the country, uh, near Canada, northern New York. And uh, so I'm not it. I don't, I don't hang out at the comedy store or uh, the improv anymore. And over time, like when you see me and Jeselnik having it out on Twitter, and you see me having it out with like people in politics and stuff, and they start getting these balls that I have no protection and that they can just talk shit like this cripple can just roll up on me. Um, they're very, very wrong. Like if I went back to LA for one month and started doing my show at the improv again, or just hanging out, they'd all just creep back into their little holes. And that's a fact because one of the things that I was, that drew me to stand up comedy was that if you kill hard enough, you kill hard enough. There's no, there's no subjective to it. There is about who gets Netflix specials and who gets uh, power positions and all that. But if it, whoever walks on the stage, grabs the microphone and makes the crowd laugh the hardest, if you then come at that guy in that room, because that's the thing, the difference between the computer and the room. In that room, you become king. And over time people start giving you respect. When you get off stage, the famous guys start giving you respect. The old guys start giving you respect. The staff, the bus boy, you know, they start being like, yo, what's up, man? Oh, no way, dude, you crushed. And then over time, people start realizing that that's what you deserve. Am I offline now? What the hell does this say? Why does it say offline? Am I still streaming? Yo, um, chat. Am I on? Still good? All right, cool. And so online, it's easy for the vampires to start taking over. You know, it's kind of like when a gang member goes to prison. And then all the, the lieutenants think that they have the balls. And uh, they can start talking shit, trying to roll up on their chick and all that shit. Uh, and when in reality, it, the guy's just in prison. But this isn't prison. This is freedom. They're in fucking prison. All right, anyway. Any gay. Okie Bear. Oh, yeah, Kendrick Lamar. I talked on that. The 
It's from original SJW. Oh, and then we have to talk about who's worse, the alt right or SJWs. And I, I don't think it's as obvious as people think. It's it's obvious to just say SJWs are worse because they're trying to take down American society, but alt right are sneakily so bad. Because A, they're taking the title of right wing, which is real bad. Like even Jordan Peterson referenced like the Nazis as fucking right wing. And B, they're crybaby little bitches. Like a few of the old bears that are that just completely lost their mind and uh, turned on me. I think like in the very beginning of the bears, a couple actual racist weirdos thought that this was like a place for them. And then over time, they realized it isn't, especially with uh, Eric Nimmer being like one of my right hand men and him being a, a black dude. Like 0.0001% of the bears were like, what? And, um, and they were trying to use that, that cripple shit. This one guy sent it to Prager U and Crowder and Rogan. And I like people send me screenshots of Twitter of people doing that being like, I used to be an Owen Benjamin supporter and look at what he did. It, it, of course they leave out how the, 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 the cripple first started the whole fight. They do the SJW tactics. They do the same thing with racial shit, with Jew shit. They're fucking SJWs of race. I swear to God, they're fucking SJWs of race. And it's really, really dangerous because they can blend in with the free market guys and with the, the Liberty guys and the first, and, you know, the first amendment guys and second amendment guys and, and Christians and shit like that because, because they, um, uh, they talk like that briefly and then you realize that they're fucking retards, you know? Old bears did that. Well, they weren't really bears. You know, people that thought they were Coddington, sadly, I saw this coming, but I didn't trust my gut. There were red flags all over lesson learned. Yeah, no, I had the same red flags with these guys. Same red flag. Like my gut was screaming at me. Like these guys are saying fucking really weird shit. But I, I, I try to, um, and see, this is what I'm facing now is I try to see the best in people and trust strangers until they, they fuck with me. Which is why I have such good relationships with people I've met just through the Bears or through, uh, like, Coddington, you. Like, dude, I, I just met you doing Bear stuff. I've let you stay at my house, and we're going to do a show in Florida, and we're all going to hang out. You have my actual phone number, and you've always been a fucking great friend to me. That comes from trust until no trust. But, because that's the thing, is you don't want to become the guy that doesn't trust people and becomes, like, the elusive the elusive guy. Like, I'd be like, oh no, I don't, I can't talk to fans. I can't do hangouts. I'll fucking hang out till five in the morning after shows because I assume people are good until they prove to me they're not. So like with these guys, I, I felt it early though, early. They were like sending me weird gifts and, uh, and just being manic as fuck. And it's also weird when people try and act like you. Like when people say that you're their, their idol and then you see that they do like 10 hour streams and shit trying to act like you. And you're like, oh, I've seen the movie Selena. You know? Anyway, let's keep going. But just, uh, yeah, it's weird. Creepy, creepy stuff. But as Dolev said yesterday to me, I was like talking to her about it. It's like less than 1% shouldn't ruin the whole fucking thing, you know? So, because it, like, part of me was like, do I still talk to people? And I had some good pep talks from people being like, yeah, dude, these are just a small amount of fucking crazy people that the Aya Siron all turns to. Because, like, because you guys don't understand how I operate. Like, I'm like, I'm, go I'm coming to Minneapolis. Anyone who needs a job will pay you 20 an hour. That's a bear. That, that if you if you have a verified a verified bear name, I, I'll get you work. Like I've literally just PayPal people money. I fucking recommend people for jobs. Like I literally trust bears. I'm like, if you're on board, man, this is our fucking squad. And so then when you just see a couple people become these like methy weirdos, it's kind of tough to like figure that out without a lot of personal contact. 
very like, I don't know. I can't explain it. Just really weird. All right, back in back back into the normal stuff. Let's not focus on on negativity. I've been watching all your vids recently. Love your work. Going through a tough. Oh, but my last uh, thought on the alt right versus SJWs. I think the alt right is worse because it's harder for me to uh, to see who they are sometimes. Like they're a lot easier cloaked because they'll talk about freedom and America and shit and all this stuff that I I'm on board with, but they're still SJWs. They still want something that they didn't earn. They still are like these bitchy little babies that think that it's because of their race that they are fucking denied the opportunity to like try and be better people. And they just like smoke meth all day long in their little fucking mom's basement and bitch. They're, they're literally racial SJWs and it's harder for me to, to spot them. That's why I'm starting to really, I can't stand the alt right because SJWs, at least it's obvious to see who they are. You're like, Oh yeah, you have a fucking Hillary Clinton t-shirt on. Like I get where your head's at, but the alt-right makes some good points and then they make some horrible points. And, and it's like, I can't always see them coming. And then they'll like, just start, they'll like bash you. They'll be like, you fucking coward. And then a minute later being like, oh, I'm a huge fan, dude. I love what you're doing, but address the Jewish question. And you're like, dude, you're fucking terrible. Like you, you speak like an animal. Like you speak in a way where we couldn't hang out in public. Alt-right isn't even a thing. Their YouTube has like 30,000 subs. Yeah, I, I don't know how to really uh, describe it. It really isn't a thing. It's, it's not like an actual... Listen, I will say this. The alt-right has been blown up huge by the media because the left needs a fake thing to fight against. Because the, the left needs these fake Nazis. But there's, there's some of them. And it's going to grow. It grew in, in Europe. And I understand Europe more than America just because of their migrant crisis. You know, like when you're literally seeing millions and millions of like rape gangs entering your country and you just want them to fuck out of there. There was a... Uh, oh, it was far right before alt. Yeah, but it's, it's really not the right at all. It's fucking left wing. It's, it's identity politics. Any identity politics is left wing. Right wing, read Thomas Sowell, Larry Elder. Um, uh, uh, fuck, why is my brain? Any of the Austrian econ uh, economy guys, like von Mises and all those guys, or uh, Ron Paul, or Steven Crowder on the comedy side. It's like, those are actual right wing guys where it's like supply, demand, merit, morality. Yeah, Hayek, exactly. Um, if you, if you, if you study that shit, uh, PragerU, great. PragerU is awesome. PragerU has a, a good video on alt-right. Oh wait, he's a Jew. Well, Dennis Prager's a Christian. He's born a Jew though. But a lot of Jews in PragerU. I, I sent one of them the, um, uh, the Sweet Palestine. Because I've been, want to know why I've been getting hammered by the alt-right lately? It's that fucking Crowder video I did. It's uh, Sweet Palestine. I'll show it to you guys if you guys want to see it. This is the, the song that got me. Uh, it's a joke, Owen. Well, I don't know. You got A lot of you guys can be. False Dennis Prager is a Jew. Oh, either way, it doesn't matter. Dennis Prager is Jewish. He's not a Christian. Let me look it up. Damn. Dennis Prager, Jew. Should I just say Jew? I don't fucking know. Uh... That's how little I care, as long as someone's a good person. Uh, Prager and Sibwes were raised Orthodox Jews. There he attended Broken College. Prager also studied uh, career, media. I could have sworn he converted to Christianity. It, does, it doesn't matter. He's a sick fucking uh, musician. Let me see if I just type in Dennis Prager Christian. Is Dennis Prager a Jew? Is Dennis Prager a Jew? I'll show you the uh, the Crowder one. A few defends evangelical Christians at Dennis Prager show. Dennis Prager. I 
I don't know. You guys probably know more than me or the internet. Uh, what do you guys say? Oh, Andrew Clavin is who I'm thinking of. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. So this is the uh, this is the video I made for for Crowder that got me that you guys help right. It got me in trouble with the alt right. The alt right says we don't like the jewel. We hate the jewel. We hate the jewel. Is this it? Oh, that's it. All right, I'm going to play it for you guys. It's a movie 5718. We don't like the jewel. No, because we lose her. We lose her who just hate people that do better than us. You can hate the Fed. You can hate fucking a lot of Jews that do bad things, but hating a fucking whole religion, except for Islam. Hang on. Because the Jews don't want to, like, here's the thing, here's the difference. Islam wants everyone to either be Muslim or they, they'll they kill them. Jews are like, eh, we don't need anyone else. And you're like, you sure? I really want to be a Jew. They're like, it's a lot of work. And they mean that. They literally mean that. They're like, it's, there's a whole thing. You got to learn all this squiggly shit. And yeah, yeah like Bear Jew, I texted him and he was like, he didn't, he, he wrote me back today after like several days. And he was like, oh, I was on holiday. I'm really sorry. I'm like, oh yeah, you had a Jewy thing you were doing. We all know that you can't like fucking touch a phone when like, you know, when some algorithm has a prime number shit. Like it literally is almost like they're, they're tortured by their own fucking beliefs sometimes, but it, it, it gets them through some real dark times. All right. So here is the song I just did for Steven Crowder. That the alt-right was like, not the jewel. I thought Hamas was a dip made from lots of chickpeas. It turns out it's a bunch of dudes who think Jews are a disease. They tried to break through the border with mortars and shards of broken glass. But they got distracted when they saw a goat's ass. Oh, sweet Palestine. The Middle East is always confusing to me, especially cause the media lies. But I typically side with the people not advocating genocide. Hamas has an active Twitter account and tells people to be a hero. And being a hero doesn't mean being good, it just means killing Ben Shapiro. Palestinians just want people to accept their very simple demands. And those demands are that every Jew and Christian be murdered according to the Koran. Oh, sweet Palestine. Solo. So that was the uh, the song, the song that uh, J 
JF is crying. Oh yeah, that that the alt right guy JF or whatever the the guy that was bashing me. It's like, but what about the fifty who died? It's f shut the fuck up. It's a, fuck you. Fifty more people died from fucking mosquitoes in ten minutes. And it's like those guys who can't. It's like fuck you. So now you're fucking backing the the Muslim Brotherhood. Westside Bear said something really funny. He said, uh. Uh, Palestine bringing together Nazis and communists. It's so true. It's so fucking true. Like Bernie Sanders is back in Palestine, which isn't even really real. I don't think. I like, I don't know. See, some people writing me that they're like, oh, Palestine isn't even a real word. It's like, well, that isn't really, I'm not that deep in this fucking thing, but, but, uh, I don't care. I'm just I'm just backing the side that doesn't uh fuck goats and kids and and uh and backs genocide. <laughs> Alt right thinks you can be enemy of my enemy with Islam, idiots. Oh dude, it's Islam has a lot of power too, man. It's like you wanna let in the Saudis with their wasabi with their wasabi Islam? It was made up by Yasser Arafat. Yeah, but the thing about words is once they exist, they exist. Like for example, gender is a made up word. Gender is a made-up word. It's a it's a made-up word to make people start thinking that it isn't about your dick or your vagina. But now it's a word. I use the word gender. It's like a fucking word now. It's weird how that uh, how that works. It's like sex. It was what sex are you, male or female? And then it became gender in like the seventies or eighties to kind of sneak in this weird shit. Yes, or Arafat wasn't the first head of the PLO. This is a myth. It was created by the Arab League. See, this is when things get so weird. I just think my song was funny. It's funny. It's a funny song. And uh, it gets people so riled up. But you take some some very... Here's the thing. This is why I don't like hate the alt-right. Because some of them have given me some good advice over the years. And then when you start talking about uh, Jews and stuff, they fucking freak out. And that's very jarring and troubling to me. And the thought of an ethno state is, is literally a dystopian hell for me personally, because, uh, I don't, there's a lot of white people I don't trust at all. And there's a lot of black people I trust with my life, but, uh, you take the most flack when you're over a target. That's not an alt-right saying, by the way, I'm pretty sure like some great general said that, but an alt-right guy told me that. And I think that's so true. I just don't know. You don't always know why though. You don't always know why it's a target. You know? The Fed's fucked up, though. I've been doing some research. I'm not ready to report yet, but people have been sending me some great articles about the Fed. All right, let me read some more of these. I've been watching all your vids recently. Love your work, going through a tough time, and you helped me a lot. You inspired me to do stand-up, come to UK. Well, hopefully you're not in a wheelchair, or else you'd have to do sit down. Bro, I've... Uh, I shot my special uh, Feed the Bear in Europe. Let me uh, let me give you guys a little taste. A little taste of old Feed the Bear. This was shot in uh, Manchester, England. Where's Feed the Bear? Let me see. Advice for young men. Rose. Oh, there's some good jokes in this. There's some good jokes. Pregnancy. L.A. Imagine. Oh, here we go. Here's how I feel about John Lennon. <laughs> yeah, oh, this has to download because Apple, Apple somehow knows what uh, what's good for me and what's bad for me. Oh, sweet Palestine. Okay, where is? Okay, why isn't this fucking opening? Fuck you. Where's just a real short one? Oh, this is insane. I hate technology so much, it's fucking staggering. So now when I open it, it's a video converter fucking... 
People should play a drinking game that every time I get angry at technology, they drink and they would just be drunk all the time. What's this? Yeah, Beatles are great. John Lennon moved to America. Okay, so I did this in England. Because <laughs> that's the thing. I like to do the jokes at the place where they could potentially be the most offensive. It makes me feel the least cowardly. All right. I think this is it. Here we go. And I will add where you can get where you can get the special if, if this tickles your tickles your wiener. Yeah, Beatles are great. John Lennon moved to America and we promised we weren't gonna shoot him. <laughs> you know? He's, he's a wonderful man, and he's a brilliant man, and he was moving to New York City, and we all promised. We're like, we will not shoot this guy. <laughs> but uh yeah, we ended up shooting him in the head and he died. We're, we're really sorry, you know? Um, but the more I think about John Lennon, I love a lot of his songs, like Mother is a great song, and uh, Jealous Guy, great song. Uh, but his biggest song that I've, I've watched on tape a quarter million people weep to publicly is called Imagine. And the older I get and the more I pay taxes and whatnot, <laughs> Uh, the more I rethink the lyrics of Imagine, and uh, this is me responding to Imagine from the audience as an adult. <laughs> Imagine there's no heaven, then where's my grandma? <laughs> it's easy if you try. Why would I do that to her? No hell below us, then why don't I steal everything? <laughs> Above us, only sky, but what about La Luna? <laughs> imagine all the people, I can only imagine like 200 things at a time. Sharing all the world. Great, can I have that white grand piano that you shot the music video with and I'll give you my toy piano? You first, you rich bitch. You may say I'm a dreamer. No, my dad says communist. But I'm not the only one. I hope someday you will join us. No way, I got Manchester guns. <laughs> And the world will live as one Only if everyone's dead but you <laughs> Imagine there's no countries Then why'd you move to America and not Nigeria If it doesn't matter <laughs> Imagine no possessions I don't have to imagine I'm an actual poor person you billionaire cunt <laughs> Nothing to kill or die for. I'm starting to think of a reason. And then, fortunately, someone took him out. Oh, I'm sorry. We're, we feel really bad about that. It was not. It was not. It was not a good thing. We're still. We feel bad about shooting that little red commie. I like Oasis more, man. Oasis is way better. Manchester. They're like an honest Beatles. <laughs> Made a meal and shoe No, I threw it up on Sunday. That's so honest. <laughs> Made a meal and threw it up on Sunday. I've got a lot of things to learn. Humble, honest. Imagine I'm not a fucking liar. You fuck you! Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I got carried away. He was not, he was not a good man who killed John Lennon. John Lennon was a, a beautiful person and also probably trying to spread something called an ideological contagion.
I'm just kidding. Am I? You guys don't even know. <laughs> All right, so there, that was that. That was in England. And by the way, hats off to England. They take those, they, they enjoy that joke a lot of times more than, uh, than people in like Portland, Oregon and, and West Hollywood. Don't get me wrong, I'd always get them. But uh, they thought that was fucking funny. They, they didn't even like John Lennon. Like, uh, John Lennon is a fucking cunt. All right. Yeah, I'm a real third rate piano comic. You cripple fuck. You cripple. Let's see you do that in England. Now you're probably just going to go, I'm in a wheelchair. So. <laughs> oh, and <laughs> me. JF exposed your psychotic bullshit, Crowder True. Oh, well, you just got banned from the stream. So, why don't you go? That guy's a fag. That guy's a faggot. Okay. Netflix has 100 million users, according to Google. Wouldn't that be $1 billion a month? I would love to believe you, but why do you think it's government funded? Um, I don't. I just do. I'll, I'll get more info on it if you guys want. It just makes complete sense to me. It's the, the former, the fact that the former cabinet of, of uh, or, or some of uh, Obama's main people are now running it and it doesn't ever make money ever. It's never made a profit. And uh, 100 million users don't spend $10 a month. It's just, there's no chance that that's true. I don't know anyone who doesn't share an account. I share an account with my wife's family who shares an account with their entire family. And uh, so a hundred million. And I'm guessing like in fucking Sierra Leone, it isn't 10 bucks a month. And I just, it's so heavily pro-socialist that that always means government. It always does. All right. Yo, Owen, love the music. Uh, regarding your thoughts of the far right also being left, it's just semantics. Dichotomy of individualism, collectivism rather than chaos order. Yeah. But collectivism is far left. Individualism is far right. So I don't really know. I understand that if there's multiple dimensions and quadrants, language doesn't always work, right? If you have more than one axioms or whatever the fuck they're called where uh one is uh individual to collective and another is chaos order and you have like uh eric weinstein's four quadrant model uh yeah i think that's fine and well and good but far left is bigger government far right is smaller government and that's so far it's so easy a child can understand and that's why it's intended to be so complicated because it's so easy a child could understand Chaos and order, ah, well, I'm about to get sidetracked. I got to stay focused. If you carry a pistol, what do you carry? I don't own a pistol. I would in a heartbeat. New York, St New York State is really, really hard uh, at getting uh, permits for that shit. Yeah, it's, it's really annoying. It's fucking wicked annoying. I mean, what I should do is get a crossbow pistol. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't have, I would love, I would love one, but New York state is, uh, is horrifying. It's just so stupid. I mean, I could get one and just leave it in my house, but I would want to carry it around. I should just keep a, a rifle on my back. I think that'd be hilarious. Washington is a shell issue state. Big bear. Got to get that 1911. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Move to Texas. I know, never. We should. We should just start a fucking whole thing in Texas. Why do you seem like someone who wouldn't carry a pistol but a battle axe? Ah, yeah. I mean, sometimes a bat or a, a sword. Like one of the bears is making me the sickest knife. That shit's better for under twenty feet uh, closing distance. A blade. I think England's starting to figure that one out. But uh, I just think pistols are so fucking cool. Oh, all right. Anyway, I hope you're not like Crowder and Walther is everything not that they are 
bad because CZ is just better. Sorry, I'm just a combat veteran who stereotypically loves guns. Yeah, I mean, guns are really cool. It's a really cool thing to be obsessed with. I know a lot of people that are really obsessed with guns. I would be more if I had more property. Like I have um, an acre and a half, like two acres and an acre on either side of me of open woods. And I live in a very, very low population area, but at the same time, it's illegal to shoot a gun on my property. I want to show you guys this video. I put it on Instagram is where I spent like hours and hours yesterday trying to build a wall in my backyard of wood and boulders to keep the Mexican deer out. <laughs> and it worked. And I was showing like just how close the, the, the deer walk to the house and people were like, dude, just take them out. And I'm like, it's, it's technically illegal in the village. And I just, I, I, I like to shoot my bow a lot. I have a, I have a pretty sweet bow, but I don't trust myself with a deer and a bow. I'm not accurate enough. I mean, with a, a rifle, I a hundred percent, I'm accurate enough to kill deer, but with, a with a bow, I'm not, I, I, I just feel like I, I have that like nervousness that I would just injure it and it would just fucking run away. Like I just hit it in the ass. I just don't think I could get a like heart lungs or brain with a fucking bow. Like not, not yet. I'd have to be like pretty close. But the cool thing is if you just kill one on your property, it the rest of the deer would smell death and, and not come, come back. Cause a lot of people don't understand deer suck. Deer eat all your fucking, like we're growing, uh, like we grow vegetables and stuff and flowers and the deer will just eat all of it. They have deer ticks with Lyme disease, which pretty much my bro my brother's obsessed with. Oh, Steve. Now, oh, uh, uh, they won't. No, they won't. Not true. Oh, interesting. So someone told me. If that's not, I trust you guys. You guys fucking know what you're talking about. But I feel like if you, you really, they don't smell that shit. I mean, they're they are like giant squirrels. I shot a doe and 10 minutes later, a doe walked by the body. Oh, shit. Well, there goes that theory. Oh. Well, how? what if you did like a deer accost? Like what if you killed like all of them and just left the bodies out? At that point, would it? Prayer animals will avoid dead, but prey type not so much. Interesting. Interesting. This, this is a good conversation. All right, I got to keep reading these, though. Could have been a retarded doe. Well, all doe are retarded. All deer are retarded. They're literally like, like the deer, like, they're like stoners when it comes to, to cars. They're like, dude, you see those headlights? Don't fucking move, bro. Just don't move. I'm telling you, man, I got a plan. The only way we can survive those headlights is if we run right at them. Just as fast as you can, just run right at the headlights. <laughs> like they're like complete idiots. All right, Jason, I've been working on a cock puppet idea, like a little Muhammad to help get a grip on Islam <laughs> or a little hog. So he's fine. So he'll finally have some hair on his balls. <laughs> Maybe I can make a foreskin puppet for those without. Well, that that could cross some line with some with some people, but I like where your head's at. William, hey, Big Bear, I've been missing the stream due to work. Keep fighting the good fight. Turned my best friend on to you. He's coming to see you in Bellevue. God's blessing to all the bears. Much love, my friend. Yeah, Bellevue's going to be great. I think we might be sold out now, though. Maybe there's a few left. But that one's going to be fucking packed. And I think we're doing Atlanta in June. I just have to get them to sign this. Uh, I just have to get them to sign a no cancellation thing. Oh, and on Saturday, I'll be at the Unconvention in Omaha with Ron Paul and a bunch of other fucking legends. So I'm just flying out for a day to do that. I'll be home for my birthday on Friday, though. I was going to be out there, but they got they switched my, my time for me so I could, be, uh, I could have a nice dinner with the family. Hi, I'm a big fan of you, Crowder and Gavin. You guys did not sell out to the Marxists. Oh, thank you, Jeff. I'm a fan of you for being uh, for being so capable of understanding who the uh, the legends are. Right, what do we got here? Aircraft Sparky. Hell yeah, Big Bear. Keep doing what you do. Huge pianist. 
Make sure to check out Aircraft Sparky's Thursday night streams on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. CST on YouTube. See you there. Red Panda Power. He's coming in hot. So, uh, Aircraft Sparky's Thursday night streams on Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. CST. I mean, Central Standard Time. Uh, for those Jews out there that don't know American time. Red Panda Power. I'm a broke 14-year-old, so this is all you get. Well, thank you. The fact you have any money at 14 is pretty pretty astoundingly cool. I did. I had a stock, I had a stock account by 14. I started selling shit when I was 9. I think that's why I'm so into John Taylor Gatto right now. is because he kind of appeals to the people that as kids were kind of business-oriented. But for me, it wasn't about the money. It was about the sale. It got addicting. Jennifer. If you watch the BBC's Center, Century of the Self or The Power of Nightmares, Kanye West is seriously being red-pilled as he tweeted about the former. I haven't seen that. Uh, but yeah, that's cool. Kristen, happy uh, early birthday. I am 38 too. It's not that bad. <laughs> well, that's a selling uh, great endorsement. You make our world a better place with UNN and live streams. UnbearableNewsNetwork.com. We will have, by my birthday, we'll have a video. I've seen some preliminary stuff and it looks unbelievable. Like you can't believe how cool the, the opening looks. Your comedy helped me communicate with my hubby better. Much love from Boy Mom Bear. Hell yeah, Boy Mom Bear. Muscle Man, I always found it weird how some people think you need to earn their respect. My parents raised me to respect all people till they disrespect me. Yeah. Well, there's like, I assume, it's not that I necessarily respect, well, I give them like basic respect and I assume I, I give people a chance until they don't. And don't get me wrong. I'm not one of these uh, people that thinks everyone's good and society makes them bad. No, I, I know that good and evil are split down the middle of a man's heart. I get that. But I'm not going to be one of these people that just assumes everyone's a danger. Because then you end up being just such a pussy. Um, yeah, like I give, I don't unleash on people until they've done something to me. The one mistake I've done with that is Sam Harris. He never attacked me and what he was saying wasn't that crazy. And I was like mocking him. I kind of did with that, like what that alt-right guy did to me. But I, I, I realized it without any prompting and I apologized for it. I highly doubt that, that that other guy will do that to me or any of these people will to me. But I just think listening to him and, and him talk shit on to Peterson in that like two hour awful podcast. And then his, like all his determinism and <clears throat> just that arrogant tone. I just had had enough. So I fucking heckled him on Twitter a bit. That That's the one time I went at someone that wasn't being hostile to me and that I should have an element of respect to. And it did kind of haunt me for a bit. It still does. And it's been months and I lost nothing from it. I just, uh. It's just so many of my like lethal shit that I would do were, were I was being, it was provoked. I had been poked. The bear had been poked. Or it was like the Justin Trudeau type where they're trying to pass legislation to make uh, words illegal. Shit like that. But attacking Sam Harris on Twitter, that was gay of me. It's a gay move. And I feel bad. I still do. I still feel bad about it. Just because I, I feel like, not that I feel embarrassed or shame or anything like that. I feel uh, that I crossed my own ethics. Just because I had just listened to him and, 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 and Peterson. And when he was talking about how there is no good or evil, really. I, I was just getting so fucking mad. Anyway. Yo, man. I'm the dude who asked you to talk to Jay Dyer on Patreon, and you told me to give him your phone number, which I did. Is that still happening? I have no idea what you're talking about. Who's Jay Dyer? Uh, anyone know who this dude's talking about? Salmon is an entitled elitist that was raised in Hollywood comfort and prestige. That That's true, by the way, but it's all good. I wish you still had Twitter just so you could go off on Dyson. Oh, I know. The evil is usually the uh, the one telling you there is no good or evil. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, can you resend me like what we're, that we're talking about? I, I I interact with just such a monstrously giant amount of people. A Christian alt writer. Oh, is he the guy that was talking shit? Is that the JD guy? No, JL. Who's the one who was just talking shit about me in uh in Canada? 
I don't even know these people's names. JF? Oh, no, no, no. That's a different guy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'll talk to anybody that doesn't come in with disrespect. Because I... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, like I'll talk to alt-writers. I'll have a very cordial talk. Like, if anybody wants to talk ideas, I'll talk to anybody who has differing ideas with me. It's just if people start calling me a fucking shill or a Nazi or some shit, no. There's no chance. Jeff was talking shit about Owen. Yeah, about my uh, uh, Palestine song on Crowder. He said I was some fucking Zionist chill guy or whatever. It's so dumb and gay. It's just so fucking dumb. Uh, Jay Dyer is the author of Esoteric Hollywood and has, has some serious disappointments with Dr... Serious disappointments with Dr. JBP. Hey man, I don't I'm fine with that. If some if anybody if anybody wants to uh, debate ideas, like Dave Smith is a close friend of mine and a intellectual fucking monster. And I just had him on and we me and him disagree on things. You gotta disagree on it with everybody. Like like everybody has some disagreement, and I'm all I'm all about talking to anybody. But if someone Hang on. Oh, Solzhenitsyn. Solzhenitsyn was not a racist or Jew hater or whatever. He called for people to reflect on the problems in their own histories. Totally. Totally. I love Solzhenitsyn. Such a fucking legend. Owen, would you consider doing an interview with Vox Day? He's a Christian and a Native American Indian. Sure. As long as he doesn't fucking come at me with personal attacks. Oh, he's, uh, this is about the JF guy. He said that you were whistling over 50 dead bodies. He was talking about the kazoo. Yeah, I was. I was. I was. I was whistling over 50 dead bodies. I was making something funny that, that seemed really intense. That's what comedy does. Vox Day also hates Jordan Peterson. Yeah, I'll... I'll uh, JB got me to read Solzhenitsyn and changed my life. Me too. I'll debate JP with anybody. I love Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson helped save my life. I'm, I'm dead serious. Yes, horror is dealt with with comedy. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, I whistled over the dead bodies of a bunch of people in the Middle East. Am I a Christian? Yes. Non-denominational, though. I'm not really good with church. But, you know, maybe later in life. I think uh, I'll rethink church, depending on my son. Because I think the people, uh, kids sometimes need to visually see things and uh, traditions and stuff like that. But I, I, I just don't really enjoy church myself. You know, it's, it's, it just isn't for me. Every time I try, it feels forced. But I, I uh, Christianity doesn't feel remotely forced to me. In fact, I tried not being one because I thought that it was uh, just because of how much shit people talk about Christians. I didn't want to be, you know, as, as soon as you say you're a Christian around like the Hollywood crowd, um, they, uh, they act like you're fucking retarded. But I, it's just, it's a fact. And uh, I am. You mean the Jordan Peterson that is top trending on Twitter and best-selling author? We never went to synagogue and I still have Jewish values and morals. Yeah, you don't need to go sit in a place. Peterson has been asked to write the foreword in the 50th anniversary edition of the Gulag Archipelago. The honor could not go to a more worthy person. I think he should be like time person of the year. I think what Peterson has done has helped more people than anybody I can imagine. Uh, Shark Attack Bear. I agree. I don't go to church. I feel like they act like I'm not as good as them. Well... Institutions to me have turned on me so many times in life that I just don't trust institutions that much. All right, I got to finish the PayPal's because I oh pay, I haven't read the PayPal's yet. I uh, I will. I promise I will. Uh, turns out a guy named Jeff is now running Palestine. Uh, that's either hilarious or I don't understand what that means, but that could be hilarious. Let me snag Doe Bear, World War One Doughboys, but bears. Welcome Doe Boy, Doe Bear. Sweet Palestine is my new favorite Big Bear song. Thank you, Angry Welder Bear. Alan, hey Owen, I discovered the podcast a few months back and it's easily my new favorite. I write as a hobby and would be interested in helping with UNN if needed. Any chance of being verified? Yeah, you need a bear name. I'll, I'll give you one right now just from this. Hang on. Hey Owen, I discovered this podcast. You're a few months back, Bear. Welcome. Yeah, and go to unbearablenewsnetwork.com and submit any ideas you have. We got a whole team that just goes through it. It's awesome. Alan, oh, here you are. I think main bear is taken, but soccer bear would be cool as well. Welcome, soccer bear. 
Uh, go to unbearablesapp.com and register. I still laugh my ass off at the Titanic Rose joke. You the man. Oh, thank you. Community Bear. New line for the song. They are burning tires and hurling rocks because they don't have cars and never wear socks. And if they get too close, the tear gas makes them cry. Love your comedy. Never stop. That's funny. Oh, yeah. And by the way, why the fuck don't they go to one of the giant Muslim countries around there? Like, those people killed all the Christians and Jews. That's a fact. Believe it or not. You know, and, and there is some pretty intense policies that Israel can do sometimes. And don't get me wrong. I, I'm not one of these guys that just think everything Israel does is awesome. I, I question every state. I'm not uh, an anarchy guy because I think human beings naturally have a weird tendency to follow authority. And I just don't think you can get around that fact. But I think uh, the non-aggression principle is an awesome way to frame your life around that, that Malinu talks about. But that being said, because 50 people, 50 like really, like people attacking um, Israel die, um, and that's the big news story. What about the tens of hundreds of thousands of uh, Christians that have been massacred or exiled? In the last couple decades, no one gives a fuck about those guys. Well, I do. And uh, I think as far, if you're going to, as far as the Middle East goes, I don't see how you can go, okay, you can have more Qatar or Israel. You can have more Oman. I've been to Oman. I've been to Qatar. It's Qatarded. <laughs> These places are fucking hellscapes. And it's not about money and oppression. Go to Kuwait. It's, it's, it's. Richer per capita than fucking Manhattan, the, the, the richest part of Manhattan. These people are billionaires, right? It's a hellscape. It it's literally looks like a, a, if a child drew hell. Well, at least me. It's just, you know, women are roped off in their potato sacks. And it's like one dude has a, like this whole team of women. And you'll see these, these, uh, these tents outside of golden palaces. And there's shit in the air everywhere. Everything looks like shit. You know, there's wrecked Lamborghinis on the side of the road because people are so rich they didn't even fucking pick them up. But they're so self-destructive because their their culture is so just psychotic at this point. And do I know good-hearted Muslim people? Yeah, of course. That's why I'm an individualist. That's why I'm on the spectrum of right-left. I'm not a collectivist because if I was collectivist, I would just hate all Muslims because Islam's so fucked up. But I don't. I know Muslims that have had my back and, and at points in my life that I will always be grateful for. Granted, they're usually the type that don't really practice the fucking religion. But, um, yeah. And then you got the wasabis. <laughs> oh, and I'm a high school teacher and lost a senior in a car accident three weeks before graduation. Is there ever a silver lining to tragedies like this? I haven't found one. No. That's, that's, that's tragic. That just is tragedy. I, we lost someone right before graduation to a uh, car accident as well, a good friend of mine's brother when I was in high school. And yeah, I mean, I could say it's a lesson learned to everybody else, but at the same time, I'm not going to say that that kid's life was to be a lesson. No, it just sucks. It's misery. It's tragedy. And fortunately, we have the uh, ability to get through tragedy together with um, our humanity. Like we have the tools to get through tragedy. But to say that isn't tragedy is to lie. That is tragic. And the only silver lining is that you're still here and we're all still here and we're still able to talk and that, you know, we haven't descended into socialism. <laughs> but no, I feel for you. That's horrifying. And, and it'll, it won't pass, but you'll be able to function and, um, and it will become a lesson in your heart and your mind, but there will always be a little bit of pain there depending on how close you were to the person. And, uh, it just sucks. Life is half tragic, half miracle. All right, Michael. Federal Reserve came about around the same time as the income tax, and both were related to the temperance movement. Needed to replace lost tax revenue from alcohol sales. Prohibition passed a few years later in 1917. Yeah, that whole era is real fucked up. World War I era is when so many things... Woodrow Wilson, I'm convinced, is the worst president we ever had. Because, like... So many policies were put in place that dismantled our fucking society. And you can't blame the Jews. Woodrow Wilson is not a Jew. There are some Jews involved. 
but it's super ignorant to, to, I mean, who am I to say? I don't know the whole fucking story, but it just sounds ridiculous to blame one group of people for, uh, I, I just, you can blame the, the, the concept of the expansion of government. That's why I fight ideas, not, not, not collective, collectivized people like socialist is an idea. All right, whatever. I'm spiraling. Thanks, Pat. Robust Crypto. Favorite comedian. Recently, 10 of our conservative pages with non, with a ton of following got blocked. Mod, who is a liberal at Facebook, got asked by liberals to block it. Do you think that there's a war, that there's a war on conserv- conservatives on Facebook? Yeah, that's proven. That's a fact. I know people that work in the top levels of Facebook, and I know that's an absolute fact. That they're told to go hard at conservatives. And I was going to talk today about uh, bots a lot, but I didn't have, I didn't get to it. I've just been talking to you guys. Um, But bots are becoming a real issue. Where the censorship bots are starting to have a mind of their own and they're programmed by these liberals. So they become ultra left wing and they grow exponentially because... I know a bunch of liberals that are just as disgusted as we are with identity politics and what's happened. The only difference is they won't leave their tribe out of fear of, um, of being abandoned, out of fear of, uh, of being shunned. You know, that's a real fear in people. One of the most fearful things a person can do is speak in front of people. Because back in the day, if you were alone in front of people, you were most likely about to be killed. That's why our instincts are so... Um, horrified by that. And that's why one of the biggest skills you can have in leadership is to be able to speak in front of people because it shows bravery and it's necessary when, when gathering troops and whatnot. And, um, and so, so many people are, so many liberals I know are absolutely horrified by uh, this leftism that's, that's infecting uh, everything. Just like so many people on the right are disgusted by a lot of this alt-right SJW pussy shit, you know, but, you know, just like them, in our mind, we're like, oh, well, those are the alt-right fucking weirdos. That's what they're like. They're like, oh, well, we're not the extreme left. But then we say, well, that's the main democratic platform is now reparations, you know, eugenics. Expansion of government, socialism. Bernie Sanders wants to be fucking Venezuela. That's a fact. That's the difference. That's why I consider uh, right-wing politics in America to be more right, like more um, doable. Not that there isn't a bunch of Republicans that I find uh, horrifying, liars, snakes, um, just political fucking buffoons. But if you're going to get beaten by by a metal pipe or a rope, Listen, you don't want to get beaten by a, a knotted rope, but it's way better than a pipe. But then, you know, some of my military buddies have, have shown me the light with with some of the right wing spending with the military is such bullshit. It's such a scam because they don't get the body armor that they need or they don't get, you know, some of them try to fucking not even send home the bodies because of money, because they have to pay all these fucking their buddies all, all the, the, the billionaire buddies money before they can send home uh, a dead soldier. And that to me is beyond disgusting. And that's Republicans doing that shit. But as far as ideologies, you can't go wrong with smaller government, higher individual, uh, higher um, individual accountability, shit like that. That's why I am what I am. And I did. Uh, do you think smoking weed is a sin? No, of course not. Do I think it's good for a developing brain? No. Do I think it's good for people that are unemployed or people that like already have a hard time motivating themselves? No. But if I, if I said weed is a sin, actually, if you think about what sin means, yeah. But it's the same way beers are a sin. Like, any, like sin, Peterson talked about this, that sin just means missing the mark. That you just missed the mark. Does it help you? Actually, some people it does help. I sin when, it, like, if I'm drinking a beer in bed, that that blatantly is not good for me. Like, that is missing a mark. So that's all sin means. Sin doesn't carry with it the 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 burning of your immortal soul, 
the way a lot of people think. There are some sins that are much worse than others, obviously. There's a whole scale. But that type of sin uh, is up there with fucking eating too many cookies. I think weed should be decriminalized in America. I feel like a hypocrite that I can go to the store. Because I don't personally smoke weed unless... I'm with one of the like the weed gurus like uh, Rogan because that's a fun time being like smoking weed with people that really know a lot about it. It's 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 fun, but I don't. It's just not for me. It's not my thing. But I do like drinking beers and I like caffeine a lot. I drink a fucking ton of coffee, and so I feel like uh, I would be a hypocrite if I said that I can go to the store and buy. A case of beer, which if I drank drank all of it, I would be so fucking drunk that I would, if I drove a car, I would, I would probably like kill somebody. And that someone else, if they're smoking weed and they get pulled over by a cop, they should lose all their uh, money and possessions. Like that to me is, is a no, it's a no brainer. You know, it's like, no, that's, that's crazy. You know, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty glad meth is illegal is illegal, but at the same time, it's tough to argue as a, as, as a, as a personal libertarian in a lot of ways, it's like, um, it's really tough for me to argue why someone shouldn't be allowed to do whatever they want with their body. So I think all drugs should be legal just because I, I I truly don't have an argument against it, but am I secretly glad that meth is illegal? Yeah, of course I am. Meth is fucking psychotic. But like, you know, I, I can't argue. It's just kind of like why I'm, I'm against abortion all the way to, um, to conception. It's, it's, I want to be okay with it for the first five weeks because I don't, like to me, that's just a clump of cells and I want to be one of the cool kids who says, you know, it's a choice and whatever. And to me, it doesn't really feel like anything. But I don't know the difference, how I can argue the difference between 20 weeks and one week. Like, what is it? The heartbeat? When the, when the face starts forming? The only real moment is conception and then birth. So in that, in that period of time, and then you could say, well, it could survive outside of the womb well that changes based on how much technology you have and and um you could theoretically grow a baby from a conceived egg outside of the womb theoretically if you had the right technology so now if i can't argue my my gut would say and and i i feel an element of guilt with this i'll be honest with you i feel an element of guilt that my gut says like a little tiny speck of conceived um, cells to me doesn't feel or look at all like life. And that doesn't feel like anything to me. I'm just being honest. And I wish I I felt more for it. I do. But then once you start seeing the baby forming to me, that's horrific when people have abortions, like when people end that life. So all the way up until birth, how do you argue where it's okay and where it isn't okay until you go all the way to conception. And that's why I have a, an unpopular stance in entertainment of, of being against abortion. And I, I understand people that say like, oh, five weeks, you got to let the woman have the, the right. Like, I get that. Like, they don't have a bump. It looks like just a speck. I get that. But what's the argument? Like, how do you argue that? Because if you don't have a, a, a good argument, then bad people will take it all the way to birth. And after, and once you start having this, uh, this disregard for life, it, it seeks out, it seeps out into all of life, especially with now with these bots and AI and environmentalism and the immigrant, uh, crisis and all that. You want to know what a lot of this is about is about the natural instinct to raise life and nurture something and to create life. And the amount of abortions we have and the amount of, um, just, shunning we have of the American family. I don't know. I'm not going to speak on the rest of the world, but in America, it's like, you know, women, it's all about empowerment. You work, you get abortions. You don't marry a man. You still have those instincts to create and to teach and to nurture. And so what do you do? You, 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 you start seeing like panda bears like that or fucking um, some type of owl. You know, it's like, dude, stay away from the owl, okay? 
No, that you should tr treat your kid like that. But you don't have kids, or you ignored your kid, or you like Angela Merkel, who never had kids. So now all these uh, these migrants, they call her mama as a joke. These like 30-year-old North Africans who just come and rape gangs into Germany, they call Angela Merkel mama because they know she never had kids, so they're treating... She's treating these like grown-up men as babies because she, she has such an obvious racism that, that she sees them as, as children. And a lot of people on the left see uh, minorities as children. They see uh, minorities as people that should be pampered and baby. Like, oh, you don't talk to Jamarcus like that. Jamarcus can't handle it. And, you know, Jamarcus is like, bitch, I can handle it. <laughs> It's the same with environmentalism. It's like, every time I turn on my car, I know I hurt the earth. It's like, bitch, get your own kid. Same with AI bots. They're trying to create false artificial intelligence. You know, the, 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 the Turing test. Like, can it pass? Can it be seen as a person? How about you just make a person? How does that sound? How about you don't fucking spend your life coding and programming fake people when all your instinct is telling you just make people and protect people and teach people. It's way more natural. It's better for the environment. It's better for our society. It's better for everything if you just do what you're designed to do. All right, let me read some of these, um, feed the bears. I, I, I don't have much time, so I'm just gonna do like the, the higher ones, just out of respect. George, thank you, buddy. History is God's story as well. Our lives are our own stories. He granted us. Our children, like your Wally, are part of those stories in our lives. We are to teach them about heroes and taking a stand. Posted this on Twitter, quote unquote. Sin since it is so likely that children will meet cruel enemies, let them at least have heard of brave knights and heroic courage. C.S. Lewis. Wow, that, that got me a little jammed up. Yeah, because our, our little kids will meet evil. I think about that. I see Walter just being like, Walter, tuta, titu. Ditu means thank you. It, he's the best kid. He's so good. But you have to train him to, to beat evil. He will meet evil. He will meet people that want to hurt him just because he's good. Because that's what good does. E or that's what evil does. Evil in the face of good becomes furious. Like just like brave men, like a, a heroic man, a normal man that stands up and says, what you're doing is wrong. If everyone does that simple act, there is no, like evil doesn't win the way it's currently winning. So that's why they have to make an example out of people that stand up for good over their own interests because it's becoming rarer and rarer. That's why my story is a, is a hero's journey. And I don't mean that to compliment myself. It's just true. And so what do they do? They have to, they have to um, take away Take away my name. If you kill a man's name, um, the story gets killed. And, and evil doesn't like the story of heroes. That's why they're against Christianity. That's why they, they try to, to ruin people that stand up and say, I don't want to hurt kids anymore. I don't want to be a teacher in this system and hurt kids like John Taylor Gatto did. And they dragged him through the mud. You know, Stefan Molyneux, like they dragged him through the mud because he said there's something really going wrong with our government. And man, it, it takes effort to take these people and drag them through the mud. Look at me. Look at what they did to me. <clears throat> you know, now they're slandering me in ways that are just incomprehensible. And it's like just anybody that stands up to evil, they try to take that away because that terrifies evil. I wrote down a quote. What was it? I wrote down a quote the other day that I wanted to... If evil can't dominate good, it loses. I wrote that down yesterday. If evil can't dominate good, it goes away. It has to dominate good. That's why that, that cripple was saying that I... Um, I, I'm not allowed to do comedy anymore. He's not even a comedian anymore. He can't sell tickets anymore. These are lies. Because they have to take that away from you. But they can't with me. Because I have something worth living for, fighting for. I, I believe in things 
greater than me or all of us. And that's why they don't allow living heroes. Eric Weinstein told me that in one of our one of our long and illustrious phone conversations. He said, uh, there's no living heroes. They don't let living heroes because living heroes can become more powerful than the, than the evil. So they try and take you down, you know. And that's why these you guys are keeping me going. You're keeping the, the movement going. You're keeping the voice going. That's why people come up to me literally where we're eating. And they say, it's the coolest thing, man. Because I've been around a lot of famous people in my life. And to me, it like a lot of times it looks suffocating when it when you have like a when you're sitting there with one of these like just super famous people and people just come up, can I take a picture? What's it like? Blah blah blah. It's just it's nonstop noise. What I've experienced has been an honor. Like my my mom was so blown away just by the simple act of I just take her out to breakfast and, and a dude just comes up and says, Hey man, I'm big. I'm a big fan of the Bears. He's like, just keep fighting the good fight, and just walked away totally respectfully. And I get that people do that. Like sometimes, like just random dudes will come up and be like, "Hey man, keep fighting the good fight," and that's all I get because they're not trying to suck anything from me. They're not vampires. They're not trying to get close to my unearned fame, like all these fucking false idols in Hollywood, right? All these golden calves. That's why these people live in their own hell. Like, walk around with some of these famous people. It's hell for them. Just coming up. Oh, my God. I saw you. And I'm a, it's just... Ugh. But when you, when you are, like, actually doing a journey that's hard, where, like, some people look at me and think, I heard about that guy. That guy's trouble. He's a racist. He said a word. You know, they, I get some of that, too. So like when you're really walking that razor's edge and you're doing something that needs to be done and needs to be said, I'm not just celebrated. But the people that do like me, that come up to me, it's, it's such an honor to, to see people say stuff like that. Like, hey, keep fighting the good fight. That's why my book was always called The Good Fight. And for a while, my publisher was fine with it. And then I started crossing into some water. Should I read a, a portion of that? I'll read you some intense parts. Uh, and then I got to go. Oh shit, I gotta I gotta read a couple more of these. If you guys took the time to to feed the bear, I the least I can do. Hey Owen, I've been an agnostic all my life, and after listening to your streams uh, and Peterson's biblical series and a lot of soul searching, I realized I'm a I'm an atheist. Oh interesting. But at the same time I respect Christian values and think they're very important. What am I? Also, I'm from Poland. Is Auschwitz Bear taken? No, welcome Auschwitz Bear. That's hysterical that you want to call yourself Auschwitz Bear because <laughs> you're from Poland. Um, it's interesting that you went more towards atheism, but you respect Christian values. Well, yeah, I respect whatever, you know, that's what freedom's about, buddy. And welcome Auschwitz bear. Work will set you free, babe. Work will set you free. It was the most ironic, dark joke ever written on the, on, on, on the door of anywhere. It's on the door of Auschwitz. Work will set you free. The punchline is it didn't. Bear in a lab coat, Captain Maroney here. At the DMV, you know, the place God avoids like hell, had to sissy squat for the camera. I'm 6'4", too tall standing up, too short when doing a real squat. <laughs> Told the worker, this is prejudice against us tallers. He had some uh, height, so he laughed. Of course, name dropped you. Thanks, Owen. Is your dad willing to come on camera? Would love to hear him discuss rhetoric. Um, that's hilarious, and thanks for giving me props on that. Um, I think my dad would. He just, uh, he's hilarious, dude. He, uh... We're debating all these policy things to the point to the point of exhaustion. And he was like, dude, I just don't even I'm out. He's like, I'm 75. I'm just I'm out, man. <laughs> it's like I'm so excited to just just not give a fuck anymore. And I, I can see it in his eyes. He really is excited to not give a fuck. Oh, Neil. Hey Owen, this is Neil. Been using KD Bear for now unofficially. Wondering if anyone has taken Tranny Bear yet. Welcome, Tranny Bear. Tranny, of course, the transmission mechanics is a nickname for transmissions. Yeah, be Tranny Bear. If I can find a... Uh... Are you guys cool with me going a little longer today? I'm going to read... Let me see. All, all files. I'll read like a darker part of my book. You're funny when you're mad. Is this it? Let's 
Let's see. Let me go in the chat real quick. You guys cool with me going to just read a little uh, part of my book? Send it. Yeah. Oh, and check out uh, Eric Nimmer's new special, Send It, that I produced all myself. Uh, hugepianist.com slash specials. Yeah. It's only five bucks. Because uh, you don't have to pay the blacks as much as the whites. All right, let's see where we're at. Oh, I won't do a super dark section. Yeah. I won't do a super dark section today. I won't end with that amount of darkness. Uh, when to throw in the towel? Hmm. Oh, this is a good one. People sometimes ask about like getting through hard stuff. Um, and when to quit, like when do you know to quit? Man, I gotta reread some of this stuff. So I don't even remember what I wrote half the problem or half the time. I kind of don't want to spoil some of this shit too. I have, a whole, I have a chapter called Stumbling Towards Peace. <laughs> Let me see some real quick. Man, I wrote a lot. I haven't even opened this up yet this week. I'm such a, I'm such a douche. I'm such a douche. Oh my God, you're such a douche. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me see here. Oh, dude, this is this this gets intense. Oh, god. Hang on a second. Let me just take a second. Let me, um, give me a second. All right. I want to read this thing. It's called Winter Solstice, date 211. Uh, why does everyone have to explain what Jordan Peterson does? Well, he's just, he's an icon right now. And that's what people do with icons. Uh, Bolshevik fanboy art. Yes, we should burn everything that has historical value. Good take. Well, yeah. All right. Guys, I'm going to read a, a section of the book that's pretty intense, if you guys are cool with it. Peterson is a Bolshevik mole. Oh, God. We have just this bullshit happening here. Are you guys cool with this? Don't be a coward to bait JF. No, it's not about cowardice. It would be a coward if I did. I don't let people into my life that, that talk shit about me. Do you understand what coward actually means? A coward would be someone who who um, who feels social pressure to. Uh, I'll debate an alt right guy who hates Peterson, not someone who talks shit about me on their live stream. No, I have way more self respect than that, buddy. That's like being like, "Don't be a coward. Let me piss in your mouth." It's like, no, that's not how it works. Okay, this is called. Uh, This is called the winter solstice. Uh. Uh, 
All right. Date two eleven. Bear in mind, I'm jumping. I'm jumping ahead a little bit. My my mother loves stories. She can tra- uh, she can transition from a conversation about the Bible to pagan rituals to Harry Potter. She sees levels of stories and rituals that always blow my mind. Just like Joseph Campbell, she relishes in the patterns, the archetypes, the meaning, and the deep human truth that seems to transmit through stories from all corners and eras of the world. We were raised kind of Catholic and kind of Presbyterian. Shout out, George. My grandmother was Jewish, but no one really discussed it. It's tough to define what my family's faith was. There was Christianity, also a deep agnosticism that comes from the skeptical intellectual world. Yet there was always a reverence to rituals, holidays, myths, stories, and the realm of the unknown. I didn't fully realize I was Christian again until Walter was born, but we aren't there yet in the story. On my wall as a child, I had hanging a collage that said, Choose your own reality. And it was images from stories. Uh, a butterfly flying over a moonlit pond, a little boy in a boat, a pair of shoes by the door of a log cabin, lots of fragments from the reality of stories. She read to me all of C.S. Lewis, Madeline Langle's A Wrinkle in Time, a book that later I've realized had an insane amount of semi-accurate theoretical physics in it, and the Dark is Rising series, the BFG, Tolkien, and every other book that has since become a much worse movie. I'm going to add in much worse movie. No, negative. I would sometimes curl up at her feet and she would read for hours, occasionally stopping to see if I was still listening. I would say back to her the plot points with bizarre accuracy that auditory learners have. She would smile and continue reading. I still have the best conversations with my mother. We talk for hours about anything and all the stories and ideas and chit chat seem to flow seamlessly like children's stories. The real power of story is in its universality. You see the same themes over and over again, and the repetition starts to resemble something like truth. We would celebrate Christmas sometimes a few days early on December 21st because that was the winter solstice. My parents would tell me that Jesus was born in April, and the Romans wanted to compete compete with the pagans for the prime holiday real estate, so they just moved Jesus' birthday to the 25th. So, they reasoned, we may as well bring it back a few days to the actual day they were trying to hijack. Um, The winter solstice, and then we'd celebrate Christmas, I got to... Uh, we'd also celebrate Christmas on the 25th. That's why I was so cool with it. All right, but anyway, the winter solstice, the darkest day of the year. It was seen as sacred and special because every day after that was brighter. Some people thought the celebration of the winter solstice had to do with the devil. The people relished in the darkness. It's actually the opposite. The ancient people will relish in the end of the slow descent into darkness and the beginning of the rise to light. I would always show my Christian respect on Christmas but my astronomical respect to the light ascension on that day as well. Jews don't seem to really care about the holidays that much unless they revolve around remembering and talking about some insanely depressing thing that happened in their fairly recent past. (laughs) I gotta add, or their distant past. I can pinpoint mine and Amy's winter solstice exactly. The day everything went black and we could only climb toward the light from there. Who knows what the future brings? I hope with all my heart that another winter solstice doesn't overshadow this one, but you never know. I learned that from my Jewish side of the family. Shit happens. Really, really bad shit happens. I was on tour with the guys from the sitcom Sullivan and Son that, was, uh, that I was on. We'd shoot a season and then tour while it was airing to promote the, the show. It was a great idea. Steve Byrne thought of it. We did it at a break, even rate. So it was, uh, so it was a pretty... Big time commitment we had all agreed to for the sake of the show. No one at the studio or network told us to do it. It was just the work ethic and grit of four stand-up comedians in an actor's world. We were so used to driving 15 hours to gigs with shady door deals and aggressive drunks yelling at us that this was a no-brainer. We had a shot at TV success, and we would do anything in our power to keep our ratings up to make it to the next year. We did that for three years until they turned the lights out, turned the lights out on us, but I'm glad we did it. As my old football coach used to say, we left it all on the field. We could sleep knowing that. We had an extra hostile show one night in Philadelphia. When I was on stage, my keyboard wasn't working, and I signaled to the sound guy to turn it up, who wasn't at the soundboard. So I started asking for the sound guy instead of telling jokes. By the end, I was just yelling, sound guy, sound guy. 
Your job is to make sound. That's it. Make sound. He never emerged from the four-hour smoke break he was on, so I just did more stand-up instead of playing the piano. The guys laughed, but there was definitely an edge to all of us that night in Philadelphia. We usually shared rooms to save money, and Roy Wood Jr. snores really bad. If he wasn't the best-hearted, funniest, most easygoing guy, it would have been super annoying. But Roy is Roy, so whoever roomed with him just kind of knew they weren't going to sleep very much. He used to joke that sleep apnea is his neck trying to kill him. Amy told me that night that she was going out with one of our mutual friends and her boyfriend. I missed her, but I was glad she was doing stuff. One thing about being on the road is maintaining that balance between your significant other having their own fun, but not growing apart as a couple. We've seemed to do that well. If she was going out every night, it would strike me as weird, but if she was always home and bored, that's equally as troubling. So this seemed like a great plan. She'd go out with our friends to a local West Hollywood bar and be able to have some fun with the safety of people we trust. The next morning, I woke up at 5 a.m. to catch a flight. I saw on my phone that Amy had texted me she was on her way to the bar, and another that she was having a good time and she missed me, and then nothing. It was annoying that she didn't tell me she had gotten home safe. I texted her, heading to the airport, how was your night? No response. I figured she was sleeping, but I was annoyed she didn't text me. She can get pretty wild when she's drunk, and although we were out of our jealousy phase, LA party nights when I'm on the road require a little extra bit of reassurance. So I wrote, kind of pissed at you for not texting me last night. By the way, as much as that sounds aggressive and dickheadish, it's just the way I am. I just say the obvious thing and I suck at nuance. It actually functions in really positive ways a lot, but I know how that sounds sometimes. We go through security and we get to our gate. Ahmed Ahmed has stopped at TSA for a random screening again. It was a running joke on all our tours that Ahmed always happened to be randomly screened. He'd laugh and get super angry about it, depending on if he, he'd either laugh or get super angry about it, depending on if he had to sleep in the same room as Roy the night before. I looked at my phone, no response. I call her, no response. It's now almost eight in the morning. I'm pissed. As we start boarding the plane, I get a call from her. I answer angrily, but relieved. Damn it, Amy, I was worried. What happened last night? Please tell me nothing too crazy. I heard a voice on the other end that didn't really sound like Amy. She sounded dazed, confused, almost like she didn't know who I was. She said, I'm in a hospital room, and I don't know where. My heart dropped. Are you hurt? What's wrong? Baby, what happened? She said, I don't know. A lady is here now. I don't see my shoes. I now feel a little angry again because it sounds like she just got insanely drunk. My head is spinning a bit with accusations. Did she hook up with someone? How could she let herself get hospital drunk on a night I'm gone? And she was just going to have fun with another couple that we were both friends with. Looking back, I would have given anything for that to have been the case. We got disconnected and I kept calling her until she answered. Sorry, babe, I had to plug in my phone. They said they found me on the street. My heart was pounding. Where? Why? What the hell happened? She whimpered, I don't know. This lady just told me they thought I was dead. I was a mile away from the bar on the street and she just said... I tested positive for a high dose of that drug that people put in girls' drinks. I'm now shaking. I'm coming home, baby. I'm getting on a plane right now. I'll be there so soon. Where are you? What hospital? I hear nothing for a few seconds then. I see a building out of my window. A few buildings. She sounds like a different person. The normal, bubbly, organized Amy who focuses on an untied shoe three tables away from us in a restaurant is now telling me I have to find a hospital near a building. The guys see in my face that something is terribly wrong. I can't get any more information out of her, and the more I press, the more I can tell she gets nervous and scared. She isn't letting the reality of the situation in, and I don't want to scare her when she's alone like this. I tell her how much I love her, and I'll be there, and to let me talk to the nurse. I tell her everything will be okay. I manage to get the specific address of the hospital and then try and find someone who can get, uh, get to her that I trust at 8 a.m. on a Sunday morning in Los Angeles. I comb through my phone and start calling people. No one's up. Voicemail, voicemail, voicemail. All our friends are around the same age. Um, where were the grandparents, the family members, the people that are up with kids? Voicemail, voicemail, voicemail. Finally, I reached one of her friends from Seattle who was trying to get into comedy. I'd hung with him a few times. He seemed like a good dude, but the important thing was she knew him 
and he may be up. He was. He understood the seriousness of the situation and went to get her. To this day, even though I rarely talk to him and we live in different lives, I owe him big. And he can always call in a favor with me. As my plane took off, I was now cut off communication with them. I sat in a tube in the sky for five hours thinking about what might have happened to my beautiful Amy. She's the last person on this planet you want to see scared or hurt. She has the wide eyes of a child and the love of a mother and doesn't even eat shrimp because she once saw one's face. My mind was spinning. I began crying pretty hard on the plane. Whenever you try not to cry is when it hits you the hardest and my eyes just start flowing. She was alone in a hospital near a building, near a few buildings. The police found her on the street and assumed she was dead. She'd been drugged. She'd been... Tears flowed down my face and I counted down the seconds of the minutes of that cross-country flight. As soon as we landed, I gave the guys a quick, quick briefing of what I had learned and where I was going. They were kind and gave me space and reassured me that everything would be okay and they'd do anything we needed. I believe them because I, I know it was true and it felt good to know we weren't alone. We had people. I got to her apartment that she still had down the street from me. After uh, we had our month by the ocean. Yeah, this is out of order, by the way. You're missing a lot of plot points. She rented a little studio apartment back in our neighborhood, Baby Steps. She wanted to be near me and work out our relationship, but still have her own autonomy, and the rent was pretty cheap. Some of my best memories of our time in L.A. were in that little studio as we'd sleep on the L-shaped couch together, head-to-head, -to -head, watching movies and giggling. It was magic. This time was not like that. John was there, and he told me what happened. She was crying and immediately hugged me. She kept saying that she was sorry, and I kept telling her it wasn't her fault. There's nothing sadder than seeing a victim say they are sorry, but for, the, but for some reason it always seems to happen. The person with the least to be sorry for begs forgiveness from the bottom of their soul for the sins of monsters who never will apologize. I held her, I thanked John, and we sat. At this point, I just wanted, to feel safe. I just wanted her to feel safe, loved, and understood. She told me the story. They were at this bar, and a group of guys had bought her and her friends drinks. Her friend's boyfriend, who was also a really good friend of mine, was 50 feet away. That's the last memory she has. Where's your friend, I asked. She will, will remain nameless for obvious reasons, but my heart started racing again thinking about her. Amy was a mess, but at least she was here, alive, with me. Where was her friend? I don't know. She's not answering texts or calls. Her boyfriend doesn't know either. Oh, my God. I called her boyfriend, and he, despite his natural ability to remain calm in insane situations, started to panic. We shared information and tried to figure out what happened. One minute they were there. The next minute they were gone, he said. She never came home. I've been up all night. I'm not going to get into details of our friend's story because they are truly horrifying. We finally heard from her at 2 p.m. when she had gotten free from where they had brought her, where they had kidnapped her. She went straight to the police. This was really happening. These things only happen in movies, not real life. Our friend, despite truly insane circumstances, went to the police and got on with her life, and to this day I have no idea how someone can be so strong. We talked about it for a few months, cried about it, raged about it, and then out of respect we all let it go. They're still together, happy, bright, full life. By the way, they, they got married. I share a very intimate bond with her boyfriend from the events uh, from these events that feels both close and odd, but we, we let it go because we had to. The police did nothing. Despite knowing exactly where the people are staying, were staying and having full cooperation from the victim with all kinds of evidence, they did nothing. Insane physical bruises and wounds and cuts and all kinds of evidence, nothing. Amy remembers them having thick accents. And between that and the minimal information we got from the detective, I'm guessing they may have been undocumented. Doesn't matter. That road would lead me to more pain uh, for them and um, would, would lead to more pain for the victims and no catharsis, even if by some miracle we got revenge. We knew what happened to our friend, but we had no idea what happened to Amy. She was left for dead on the street a mile away. She was sore, but didn't have any physical marks like our friend had. But something had maybe happened. She had been drugged, abducted. We, we had no idea. We never knew. This was our winter solstice. Not much is written about the effect on the men who love victims of sexual assault. I looked. There was one book I read called Something Like Sex and War, and one part was about the practice of rape on the civilians of the enemy you are fighting. It demoralizes the population. That is a very clinical yet accurate way to describe it. The helplessness of it is indescribable. To know someone else 
took from the person you love the most in the world what we cherish so deeply, our will. To take from someone their consciousness, to take their body and treat them like a dead animal, it damages the people in their life who love them and protect them. I'm sorry I told her in the same way she told me. She hugged me and reassured me that it wasn't my fault and she loved me. People talk about the moment they knew they loved someone, a look, a vacation, a good deed, can push people from one level of commitment to the next. I had one of those experiences in our darkest days. In the hours following the realization that all of this had happened, I felt love. I didn't realize it at the time. I was seething with rage towards invisible people I knew I'd never see in a world that can hurt its warmest inhabitants. But in that moment, on a deep instinctual level, I knew that I would never leave Amy. I knew in that moment that I would do anything for her safety and happiness. I knew that I mattered less than us. Trauma can bond people. And it wasn't in the way that it can bond strangers briefly until they sort out their lives and go back to their routines. I already loved Amy. I already cared deeply for her. I already on some level knew I wanted to marry her. And in that moment, as I felt defeated and heartbroken, as I could feel violence in my arms and compassion for her in my throat, I knew I would do anything for her. The clarity of it, the purpose, the absolute black and white truth that trauma can reveal was incredible. I've fallen in love with Amy three times in our relationship. When I first saw her smile, when monsters tried to take her smile, and a year later when we found out we had conceived a child. I felt my love for her grow and change and surge a million times in a million different moments since knowing her. But those three moments were when the universe gave me the clarity to really feel the physical reality of love. The months that followed were hard. There are a lot of unexpected emotions and problems that can follow a situation like that. And going through them seems like a better option than suppressing them. There are things that I felt that I'm deeply ashamed of. There are coping mechanisms within us that probably worked during a lion attack in the Bronze Age, but are pretty awful now. There were times when we'd be at a show and she'd do a shot with a friend and I'd see red. Every, everyone I saw was a potential threat. I'd start sweating and legitimately mentally prepare for a fight. It was horrible. In those moments, I'd slip into the awful state of thinking she was making the same mistake as before and knowingly putting herself in harm's way. I'd resent her for it and scan the room for danger. It was, a, it was dark and I was wrong. It's a glitch in human nature sometimes to blame the victim. We see it all the time in our, in our lives on the news and conspiracy theories. Some people need these alternative and infinitely less probable conspiracies to help them cope with the chaos of life. 9-11 was an inside job and these buildings clearly had explosives, a, friend's, a friend once said to us at dinner. Amy, Amy calmly said, no, that's how buildings would fall in that scenario. There's no evidence to show explosives. My friend, in the, in, in the complete confidence only idiots possess, responded, no, Amy, they, they proved it was a demolition. Amy then said, I actually have my master's degree in structural engineering, and we studied the Trade Center's collapse as part of our curriculum. I chuckled and said, buddy, she is they. He still didn't believe us, but it was all good. The conspiracy theory served its purpose and it seemed fairly harmless. It was his way of dealing with the fact that the world is chaotic and terrible things just happen. After a trauma like what we went through, I felt a creeping of weakness that nudged me towards these thoughts. Why did she take a drink from a stranger? She probably, then I would cut my thoughts off. No, that's weakness. The world of chaos. Accept it. Accept chaos. I would say in my mind, but the pain from loved ones being hurt was a crazy way of making you angry at them. She was going through someone, something different, but equally destructive. She wanted to reaffirm her autonomy and not be scared because of these people. She would drink a little too much and be a little more aggressive to prove to herself she was in control. In reality, drinking too much alcohol puts yourself in a compromising situation with strangers is the definition of not being in, in control, but human physi- psychology is funky. I was battling the psych- cycle of victim blaming and rage, and she was trying to establish control by relinquishing her, uh, her control. Fortunately for us, these forces were short-lived, and we got through them by facing it and loving each other. It is never a victim's fault. There are an infinite amount of factors that can put any or all of us into situations that we can't possibly prepare for. Me typing this book right now would be my fault if I got arthritis. You shouldn't have typed so many words. If you shake someone's hand and get the flu, is it your fault? I shouldn't have been so touchy with strangers in the winter. No, these are ways to not accept the reality of life. Shit happens. Very, very bad shit happens. Ask the Jews. They seem to celebrate it. 
In a situation that seems completely void of humor can, some, can sometimes reveal some hilarious moments. That's one reason why I'm very adamant about no one's right to judge what is and what is not a joke. No one knows what anyone has been through and what their life experience has made them find funny. Let them laugh. Because a few months after all this happened, Amy said one of the funniest things I've ever heard about something so dark. We were sitting around opening mail and she got something from the hospital. It's, it's my ambulance bill, she said, as her eyes focused in on the numbers. $1,100 to go four miles. It's not covered by insurance. I have to pay $1,100 for that ambulance ride. She paused for a beat and looked up. After everything we went through, this is the first time I really feel like I was raped. We laughed very, very hard. All right. Why was there a molten metal? Por- All right. So that was uh, another little section of the book. <laughs> Most of CRTV. All right. Let me uh, finish reading. If you guys have anything more to say, and then I'm out. That was the dark part of the book. That was a very dark part. Thanks, Ellen. That was amazing. Oh, sweet. Tears. Oh, well, sweet. Well, here's the thing. Everybody has something like that in their life. Sometimes people can't uh, articulate it well. That's my job to articulate things. But um, that, like, people have to understand that when, when judging each other. That, like, you don't know what people have been through. And, and one of the weirdest parts about this, that whole experience, <clears throat> is we don't know what happened to Amy. I, I, after a while, I, I started thinking that, that she got away somehow, like one of her psychotic, um, if you know what happened to her friend, you start realizing that, that Amy did get away because these people were pure evil, but it's just like the brushes with evil. It's so crazy. It's, and that's where, uh, we're in that. Remember, I told that story about her getting hammered in um, Tacoma, or yeah, and trying to run in the street, and me like grabbing her and holding her, and uh, dealing with all that stuff, and how those people on Twitter said that I beat my girlfriend or beat beat a girl in front of something. Do you guys remember all that? That was in the time after that, when she was going through the uh, the the process of trying to get her control back, <clears throat> and putting herself in a uh, in unnecessary risky situations and I literally was just wouldn't let her run into a street and that 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 was the setup to that <laughs> so part of the reason I read that also is just know that like there are certain things that aren't breakable and when people like try to slander me and there's shit that I'll never even reveal to the world that I've seen and people that have taught me things and things that have happened where I almost want to be like, do you not know I was trained, like trained to see through you and to not be affected by this and to, and to learn how to, how to deal, you know? And the left is a, an ideology of abuse. And it's so obvious. It's so obvious, like the abuse of it and why it draws people who hurt children and people who rape women and people who steal money and people who lie and people who misrepresent themselves and these power institutions and these there's a reason it draws the people who abuse and there's a reason why i'm i obsess about beating them or at least expose exposing them all right love you big bear you need to talk to jeff durbin about his video is marijuana is sin i can check that out yeah like share i gotta get out of here i've done a real long one today yeah, if you collectivize people, you don't, you're not abusing an individual, you're abusing a, a demographic. And that's why people do that. That's why the left sees the world as race and gender and, and all that shit. And, vic- and victimhood is celebrated. You, you ever understand the sickness of that? Oh, here's something I want to show you guys. Um, like, look at this. Look at this monstrosity. I don't know if I can even get to it. Wait a minute, why is this not coming up? I think things are about to start really breaking down here because I went so long. <sighs> I can just read it. Um, so, I posted this yesterday. 
It, like w- when you see the world clearly, whether it's through trauma or love or just real life experience, so many hidden things are revealed to you all the time. Like, okay, I posted this on Facebook. The usual, the usual suspects, the movie was directed by Singer. He is a known pedophile starring Kevin Spacey, an alleged pedophile, about how evil hides in the plain sight of a false victim. The Kaiser Sose was Verbal Kent. The, the false victim, Verbal Kent, was, was the head of evil. Like, this shit hides in plain sight. That was directed and written by a pedophile, a guy who, fact, has sex with children, starring a guy who has sex with children. Like, it's right there. It's, it's right there for people to see. And so when you have an ideology that worships the victim, what is that and why is that? And the answer is obvious. It's an ideology of abuse. And so that's why I wake up every day and do at least two hours of streaming. And I, like, There's a reason that, 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 that people get motivated. Like, I get emails and, and messages of people being like, how do you just make so much shit? Like, how do you get out of bed every day and just work like this? Like, how do you just keep... Imagine if you know, like the marathon was a guy running back to his homeland to tell them that a, an army was coming. And then he died. That's 26.2 miles. He died of exhaustion. Imagine if you knew something that was horrifying. And you had to figure out the best way to share it with people so they could protect themselves so they don't end up ravaged and ruined and abused. What do you do? You wake up every every day and you fucking... And you tell people. All right. I got to get out of here. I've done wait. Uh, Ken says, not much gets me jammed up, but damn it, Big Bear. What happened to Amy got me? The combo of rage and absolute love is the most dangerous of all in my, in, in, in my book. Not dangerous for the one you love, but those who would do harm. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. When these, when, like, when that cripple said that about, um, that, that, uh, Walter was, uh, when she got, what did the cripple say? Hang on real quick. What did that fucking dirty cripple say? Hang on, where is it? We said, uh, maybe your bike wouldn't have been stolen if you hadn't cheated on your wife before her guilt trip pregnancy. It's like when you know our actual life, that's so preposterous. Her fear of me wasn't cheating. It was murdering people. You understand that that's a thing that I've had to deal with and like come like and, and like uh, really have to come to terms with is my full knowledge that I was capable of hunting humans and killing them. And you don't really get to understand that until you, someone you love has been victimized and you realize that there is no police that'll help you, there's no authority, that it's all a scam, and that the only person that can do anything is yourself. And you realize that uh, it's political and it's gross. And there's a reason that, that these people, if you knew the story what happened to my, my friend, it's, it's, it's a horror. Like, it's a horror and the cops didn't do anything. And there's a re- there's a political reason they didn't do anything. They sell out American citizens, women, children, sell them out. The whole, why do you think they'll report on, on Donald Trump saying grab him by the pussy for, for ye- 10 years ago in a bus, but a, a gang rape doesn't even get prosecuted with proof with violent proof, violent pictures, rape kits, like nothing happened. And, and you'll never feel more alone, but also more clear when you're like, oh, I'm going to fucking kill these people. And Amy just like, our issue wasn't the normal issue. Like the people trying to attack me the normal way have, a, have another thing coming. Like my demon I had to beat was rage, not lust. In the beginning, there was some lust stuff. Like I used to have, um, still have uh, 
interactions with women online and in, in, in ways that was not respectful. Me and Amy even broke up for a month. It's all in the book. I'll get to that. But by this point, it was uh, it was rage. It was violence. It wasn't. Um, that's. It would be a lot more effective if the cripple said. Well, maybe you wouldn't have stolen your bike if you didn't hunt down and murder a man. <laughs> like I had to, I had to literally plunge into the depths of my own hell to figure out how to be a good person and not not kill people that that have hurt people. Because it, it's so there, guys, and a lot of people don't realize how close it is. That and that's one reason why I think I, I relate to some soldiers. Sometimes is like uh, the warrior, you know, the, the warrior phase, the warrior state of mind that people get in in war. Like I, I've had glimpses of that, not not in the same level as Cap or some of these other friends of mine that I've had over the years that, you know, unfortunately, a lot of them are dead. But uh, it's like when you're like, I, I will rip, I will rip the life from their body. And then you have a hard time relating. It, it almost causes a... It's so weird how that happens. It almost causes trauma to the men around a victim. And that's why people do it in war. That's why pe that's why the Russians would rape all the when they, when Russia came down after they defeated the Germans in Stalingrad and chased them all the way back to Berlin. Uh they used to say a million Russian babies were born in Germany that year. It was just the rapes. And that's what's happening right now in South Africa. They they're raping 6-month-old babies you know, of the white farmers. It's just the constant rapes because rape is what demoralizes a population. You see that now again with Germany, with the, with the Muslim um, quote unquote immigrants. The, the raping is how you break the back of a civilization. It's happened in uh, England where the cops don't even pursue it. In Sweden, if you do a Facebook post about the rapes, you may go to jail because that's how you cuck an entire civilization. There is a crossroads and it is not easy. It's like there, there is a crossroads to the people that love victims and, and thousands and thousands of women are being raped right now in Sweden and in England. And a lot of uh, grooming gangs are uh, raping children in England and, and uh, Sweden and Germany by these uh, Muslim immigrants. And uh, the no-go zones and all that stuff happened because that is the, the worst hell a man can experience is when they allow it. When they say, I won't speak up, I won't say a word, I just want my candy. I want my candy and my money from the government. I, I, I don't want to walk into a room and have any, anyone call me a racist. These people, these cucks, these fucking quote unquote men, right here in America, it's happening right now, would rather their women be raped and their society be destroyed than be called a name. Ugh. Just, and, and people ask me why I don't, I don't uh, like white people more than other people. Because most of them are white, these cucks. Most of them are white men. Just pussies. Just waiting for their candy. Like fucking enabling bitches. That would just rather someone get gang raped with nothing happening. With more of these trans five-year-olds. Why do you think I, I have the ability of speaking out against these things? Why I'm one of the only people that have this ability? Because I've seen the devil. I've seen the fucking devil. I know what the devil looks like. And the devil isn't shiny and big and grand and epic. The devil isn't Hitler. No. The devil isn't this grand thing. The devil is compliance. The devil is the men that do this. The devil is someone willing to give up what they love just for treats. That's the devil. That's true evil. Evil is rot. It's mold. It's not a, a falcon. It's not a big, beautiful eagle killing a mouse. No, that isn't the devil. The devil is the mouse's buddy who just goes, take him. Let me have one more peanut. That's the fucking devil. And the devil is real. And I've seen the devil. All right, guys. That's been, that's been my little day. You want to support the podcast? Hugepianist.com slash subscribe or uh, patreon.com slash WDTL. You can get tickets for our um, Northwest tour. Hugepianist.com. 
You can also uh, make sure you hit the like button, share it, or don't. You know, be a bitch. Um, what else do I have to plug? I think that's it. I'm not selling anything else right now. You can get my specials. I already plugged those, though. But yeah, the support's great. The support also lets me, it gives us a sense of confidence to know that I can pay people and uh, expand, get stuff. And we're doing good now. We're good. You see why I paid the 20 grand back for my story? You think that fucking shit gets published? The, the little, the little uh, nuance, the little bit about how they had fucking a- accents and the cops didn't do shit? You think major publications want to fucking tell that story? No. So when the book comes out, why don't you go ahead and buy it? Um, all right. Much love, everybody. Be good. Peace.